like to call on Pastor Tom Fadugua to give us the opening prayer, prayer from DCH Houston. Please put your hands together for her. This is not a, just, just a heads up. This is not a conference. We're here to praise Jesus. It's January 2023. So I'd ask that you all please rise as we welcome her. Praise the Lord. If you are excited to be here, I want you to put your hands together and celebrate God. His presence is here. The Bible says that a fire goes before him and burns up all his enemies. That the mountains and the hills, they melt like wax before him. If you know that every mountain in your life is going to melt like wax before the presence of the Lord that is powerful and mighty in this place, I want you to shout hallelujah! Hallelujah! Let us pray. Father Lord, we just want to thank you for your mighty presence here today. This indeed is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father Lord God Almighty, we commit all Abuja into your hands. We welcome your Holy Spirit. We welcome your presence. We welcome your power. We welcome your glory. We welcome your fire in this place today. Lord, you are welcome in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we pray that everyone who has come here before you will experience your power in the name of Jesus. We pray that no one will go back the same way that they have come. Father, Lord God Almighty, all that you have promised to do, we are looking forward to seeing you do them. We thank you for the signs and wonders. We thank you for enlightenment. We thank you for lifting. We thank you for healing. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for deliverance. Lord God Almighty, thank you for everything that you are said to do in this place today. Thank you, Jesus. As we worship you, as we lift you up, you will draw every single one of us unto yourself in the name of Jesus. We want to thank you for Mrs. A that you have prepared so much for today. We thank you for your power that will be made manifest through her today in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, please accept all our thanks as we welcome your presence and as we declare all Abuja open in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Put our hands together again for the Lord. Awesome Treasures Foundation is a faith-based, non-governmental organization recognized by the United Nations and the United States Congress and also affiliated with the Edmond A. Rothschild Family Philanthropy Platform. Our mission is to identify, develop, and raise transformational leaders for peace and advancement. Our footprint. For over 20 years, the Awesome Treasures Foundation has been raising a transformed tribe of partners and volunteers spread over five continents and across 28 industries, including business, education, science and technology, medicine, government, media, and many more. 66% of our mentees hold a postgraduate degree and 7.2% of them have a PhD. That's almost six times the percentage of PhD holders per capita in the USA. Since joining Awesome Treasures Foundation, our mentees have made and continue to make considerable and measurable impact in their workplaces, schools, industries, communities, cities, nations, and society at large. The numbers are incredible. 33% of them have started new ventures, while 55% have taken increased responsibility in the workplace. 45% of us have become mentors, and 39% have pushed initiatives in service to their communities. The impact continues. We are a transformed tribe transforming communities, and one of our key areas of impact have come through our annual youth summits. We've had 10 years and counting of summer leadership camps for inner city kids, and the impact has been phenomenal, as our young people have moved on to age-appropriate leadership positions.
media. Our impact is also amplified through different forms of media. Our radio broadcast, Voice of Change, is dedicated to unleashing the transformational leader in you. It has now been on air for 11 years with over 15 million listeners tuning in weekly. We've also published 12 five-star rated life-transforming books. We are a global community of transformational leaders. Our leadership summits known as the Awesome Leaders Summit are platforms for empowerment and encounter. From all Lagos to all Accra to all London to all New York to all Joburg and most recently all Houston, this summit has hosted over 100,000 attendees over the years. Real leaders, real impact. In addition to our Global Leadership Summits, Awesome Treasures Foundation also hosts SALT, a paradigm-shifting, life-changing, destiny-defining mentorship session with a unique globally diverse faculty. It is an online intensive leadership retreat with our founder, Olajimo Kade Noah, and several subject matter specialists. Through all these incredible initiatives, Awesome Treasures Foundation continues to fulfill the mission to raise transformational leaders all over the world. I would like to call on to individuals that know exactly what it means to have a heart of worship. Please, can I ask that we all rise? Please welcome Emmy Koste, Maduboka, and K Strings as they lead us into worship. Hallelujah! 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 Allah Buja, you can do better than that. Hallelujah! Come on, you can do better than that. This is awesome. Come on, clap for Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Keep clapping, keep clapping. Keep clapping. Yeah, 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 most you can do it, keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. To the King of Kings, to the one who is the behind the river we are here today. Come on. I want you to just walk around if you are able to. You can turn around, you can lift your hands. Just let the Spirit of God set you free. In the presence of the Holy Ghost, there is liberty. Hallelujah. Hands as you lay down your crown, you lay down everything to worship him, that he may have his way in this meeting this afternoon, that your coming will not be in vain, that you leave this meeting with something this afternoon. Come on, leaders, come on, just open your mouth and say something to the Holy Ghost. Do not pass me by as I lift my hands to worship you. Let nothing hinder my worship. Come on. Come on. One minute, one minute. Raise your voices. We are all worshippers. We are all born to worship Him. One of the most powerful weapons is worship. And if you are a prophetic worshipper, you know what this session means. Have your way. and worship you we lay a crown hey! to worship you we lay down our altars we lay down our crown our titles our offices we lay down everything to worship you, Jesus, that you may be known, that you may be lifted. We lay your crown and worship. Lift your voice. We lay your crown and worship. 
one minute open your mouth and just say something to the throne of grace. Makalo, brother. From the rising of the sun to the set. Kesri, on the set. Lift your voice. Say Adonai. One more time from the rising. Yeah. You're doing good. To the setting of the set. Just um, to say, um, you're all welcome. Nice to see such beautiful and um, handsome people here. And uh, I'm sure we're all in for a splendid uh, encounter with the Lord. Mrs. A. So the Awesome Treasures Foundation started as a family foundation, but very soon, so many other people joined us. Very amazing people, partners and volunteers. They have made all the difference in all that has been going on. I remember when I would fly and sponsor a summit on my own in London. But now the story has changed. We have people from all over the world joining us today. Can you clap for yourselves? And I really do mean it. From Ghana, I see Jude and Olamide. I said I won't call him Mide because it looks like it's a pet name, right? I'm not supposed to get into that zone. So Jude, Olamide, I see people from America, from Cameroon, from Britain, from all over joining us here. So we are able to do these things. We don't even, we're not even stationed in Abuja. Abuja is not our base. So how come we can hold a summit in Abuja? Because we have a team in Abuja. So usually we celebrate those who have been awesome in awesome treasures in that year. So you join me to celebrate the awesome Global Volunteer of the Year, Eno Olutayo. <laughs> Mm 
Thank you very much, Ma, for your great work for the, for the foundation. Thank you very much. I am so humbled. And I'm grateful to God. Thank you, Ma. Thank you. Let me put it in context. We have only one global volunteer of the year. That means from the Middle East, we are, in, we are on every continent, from the Middle East to Asia to I know Asia is the Middle East, don't, uh, Middle East, the same continent, I know, I did geography. And uh, the, the US, everywhere we have one volunteer, and she knows that that means she's the prime volunteer of the year, 2023. <laughs> there's no contention, there's no contest. But Eno has been amazing. She basically took over the entire summit arrangements from the media, I mean it, when I mean she took over, she just took it over. She not only volunteered, she funded, she pushed, she did everything. No, I think, can we just rise and honor her? Thank you very much. I don't usually say that much. If you are under 70, rise, if you are not, please just, if you are 70 and above, please sit, please sit. So, it's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Quickly moving on, we also have a volunteer of the year, Nigerian Lighthouses. Selfless. Uh, she has given her all. Close your mouth, close your mouth. It works event. with photos. Thank you. <laughs> because I did tell her handle the plaques, but we have our way. And she still didn't know she was, uh, yeah, but she brought the plaques in. So. She brought her own plaque. Yeah. <laughs> TJ, what do you have to say about Auntie? Auntie Aditala has been around uh, the foundation for a, very long t for a very long time. And I've seen the great work she's been doing for my mom's foundation and everyone around. And she's always put the people first before herself. And I believe she's very deserved for this award. And we're very thankful for everything you do. Aditala has been from the beginning of choosing the venue to everything. Aditala has been, I don't know, totally amazing. She's been sleeping three hours sometimes, I know because of the time she's trying to reach me. God bless you, Aditola. We appreciate you. Thank 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 you so much for being <laughs> such a wonderful Congrats. audience. <laughs> Who here read Acts of the Holy Spirit, Volume 1? Read Acts of the Holy Spirit. Put your hands up. Yes, I did too. I did too. I bought three, four copies, gave it to everybody who I knew, told them, read it, read it, read it, read it, read it. Act, that's why, there was a reason why it's called Acts of the Holy Spirit, Volume 1. Why? Because there's a Volume 2. That means that, and it wasn't as if Volume 2 could not have been written at the same time Volume 1 was written. It's now time for us to make a special presentation and to do this special presentation, by the special grace of God, because this time next year, when volume three is being written, every single one of our testimonies will be inside. Yeah. <laughs> I said every single one of our what? It will be inside. I would like to call on Pastor Gualade, supported by Apostle Israel, <laughs> Bishop Julian, Mr. Adenao as well as we do this special presentation. Um, I wrote some few things down and I don't want to forget anything. 
Um, I love to celebrate people, but I noticed something in Africa, we don't celebrate our heroes. We only celebrate them when they are gone. We celebrate them when we can't see them anymore. Uh, but can you, everyone please rise and help me celebrate and honor the grace over Mrs. A. She's a pastor, she's a philanthropist, she's an entrepreneur, she's a mentor to many, mother to nations. She's a phenomenal woman, she's a global woman. We celebrate the grace of God over your life. We, we thank God for the grace and your impactful life over the next generation. What she's doing is she's birthing a new generation. And I think that is what's celebrating. Uh, please, can you please celebrate her one more time? We, on behalf of myself, my family, the church, I pastor the Redeemed Christian Church of God, City of David, uh, Abuja. Um, we would like to support this great work. Uh, this book, I would recommend it to everyone. Many who, you, you need to read the testimonies. Uh, many have read the testimonies and in reading the testimony, they've received their own testimony. So this is a supernatural book. It's not an ordinary book. It's a book that I think every one of us should have. And it's also a way of supporting the great work. Uh, I would ask you not to buy with the exact amount. Just do something extra. Because I know that this year is a year of supernatural abundance and multiplication. Amen? And as we do that, the Almighty God will bless all of us as we lift our hands as our all and Aaron. And there's no way you can do that and God will not send people that will lift your hands. And I pray for everyone here today. You would encounter the glory of God in a new dimension this year. In the name of Jesus. So we do this in the name of the Father, Amen. the Son, Amen. and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. As the flames go up, we speak the counsel of God. Amen. That everyone who comes to encounter this book will encounter the raw power of God. Amen. Testimonies Amen. are simply saying, Lord, do it again. Amen. He will do it in your life. Amen. He will do it in the life of your beloved ones. Amen. As he has done for others, yours will be greater. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. And that wherever this book will enter, destinies will be transformed. Amen. Lives will be lifted. Yokes will be broken. Burdens will be lifted. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we declare that the light that it brings will never dim. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Introducing a quintessential king and priest, Julian Kuehler. Julian Kuehler is an accomplished business leader and serial fintech entrepreneur. In 2010, he founded the Mode Group, a fintech company spanning over 26 countries in Africa, Asia, and the Middle East. As founder and chairman of Bola City, Julian was a key negotiator in the government of Kenya and UNOPS agreement to deliver 100,000 affordable homes in Kenya. He sits on several boards across the world with links to global leaders in various sectors. As a man of faith, Julian believes the church and business are two worlds that can complement each other if the right balance is achieved. He is the founder and senior pastor of Ruach Assemblies, a ministry of the Purpose Center Church based in Nairobi, Kenya. He's a highly distinguished leader, 
and conference speaker who has a genuine passion for God and a passion for settling God's people. As a sought-after speaker, Julia has graced various platforms across the world, including Oxford University, various Silicon Valley events, and CBOs in Singapore. It was recognized as the 2015 CNBC East Africa Entrepreneur of the Year, 2012 IBM Global Entrepreneur, and a top 40 under 40 Kenyan entrepreneur on two occasions. It featured in Forbes magazine, Bloomberg International, and the New York Times. He's married to Amanda Kula and they're blessed with three sons, Nolan, Nehemiah, and Noah. Together, they are passionately committed to raising kingdom champions who are empowered for increasing kingdom culture and impact on the earth. Today, we are incredibly honored as Bishop Julian Kula shares success secrets of kings and priests with us at All Abuja. Let us give them a special welcome. The Lord, <laughs> please be seated. Um, I'm trying to calm my nerves um, and just want to appreciate in all honesty and love and gratitude um, the gift in our host today, um, Prof. I honor God for you. Uh, they call you Mrs. A, they call you Prof. Um, and I just want to say thank you very much, uh, Professor Adeno, for this amazing opportunity to be able to speak here to your wonderful husband, Mr. Adeno. Thank you for the honor and invitation um, to Abuja, uh, to my friend, um, Madam First Lady Emi Madubuko. Thank you so much for connecting me to this grace truly an ambassador from Kenya. I just want to boast about her a little bit and to thank God for you for God brought you here so that uh, Kenya can have a voice in Nigeria. <laughs> Amen. Um, most times I'd meet my friends from Nigeria. They'd say, where is Kenya? Where is this small country? And then when they come now, they say, oh, wow. We didn't know there was a treasure in East Africa. So there's something God's doing between us. To all the amazing graces of God, bishops and servants of God here, I honor the grace on your lives. And I thank God for each of you, to every delegate um, that is present, um, every leader in corporate, every leader in church. Praise the Lord. I just have a few minutes with you. Um, I, was, um, I was not sure if I was going to make it, but you have a, a leader who... Um, uh, doesn't walk in the trajectory of maybe, or we will see. She walks in the trajectory of faith of it must happen. And so as a result, here we are today. Um, the, the calendar for 2023 <laughs> was absolutely full. And if you speak to any servant of God, they will tell you January is that sacred month um, that, is, that is very, very difficult to um, um, to, 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 to move about too much. So I'm very, very humbled to be here. I understand people have traveled from all over the world to be here today. So I salute you, captains of industry that are kingdom champions. In the few minutes I have with you, I, I, I was still trying to get the room and understand. So I know you're, you're really trying to find out if um, Prof's guest has any substance. I'm also, I'm also trying to figure you out. Um, so as we figure each other out, I pray for the grace of God. Shall we pray as I begin? Heavenly Father, thank you for this amazing opportunity to share a few minutes with your children. I pray as I share these few nuggets that your grace will go before me. That Father, in this opportune time of destiny, that you will continually guide my every move and conversation. As we have this kingly conversation, be glorified in our midst. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I bring you greetings from my lovely wife and three sons, as you've seen, and just continue to pray. They keep telling me the fourth one is going to be a girl. Um, but um, that's a conversation for another day. I just have a few minutes with you. I came with a few sons. I thank God for them joining me here today. Um, but shall we jump into the presentation I have for you so that we can also take time and hear the key speaker for today? Um, I, I, um, if you, 
If you look at the next slide, it's just a statement I like giving, especially because God's given me the grace to be both in the church and in the marketplace. I'm not sure who divided those two. I don't think they should ever be divided. I don't think there's a God of the marketplace and a God of the church. We have one Father. And I think what happens is that we're on a training ground even on Sundays, and we execute everything we've heard and understand. So uh, God never gives you a dream that matches your budget. Um, I believe he's not checking for your bank account. He's checking for your faith. And this helps me in the different challenges I've had in the things that God has helped us to build in dealing with particularly two injustices I deal with because I believe that the throne of God is built on uh, the throne of righteousness and justice. Two injustices that he's given me to deal with is one, housing, which is settling his people. And in that, we're involved in thousands and thousands of houses and settling our country people um, to be able to find affordable housing, decent affordable housing, and at the same time, in the finance sector, where we are involved in um, reimagining and reemerging in how we do credit. Um, I believe um, I came with one of my sons who used to be our general manager for my previous company. Uh, we, we figured out how to lend digitally and how to do it with decency. So uh, we're going around the world releasing what we call zero interest credit. To do this for millions of people, and, and I know you're wondering how is that possible? <laughs> I know Mr. Adeno is looking at me like, I'd love to see your business model. It cannot survive. Uh, it has survived. It is a decent business model. To couple that with kingdom and to be able to serve, I believe in my previous company, we were serving 300 million people across Africa, Asia, minor, uh, India, and um, uh, all the way down to the Philippines. It was such an amazing thing to go around the world. And so the things I bring you, I don't think are theoretical. I think they're practical been practiced, built, and shown. To speak to kingdom champions like this, the next slide shows me why it's possible to achieve these things. The Bible says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels, this treasure in jars of clay, to show that the suppressing power belongs to God and not to us. So, allow me to delve into the subject of authority. Now, I put on a particular hat to speak to you today. I put on the heart of kingship. And I believe I need to deliver a kingship message to you for there to be understanding. Um, in understanding the whole theory, next slide, of authority, I need you to see something. What is authority? It's the ability to decide or to act without hindrance. It's the power, the ability, the cap capability, and capacity to complete an action. And so, anything that hinders us from completing this action is actually not authorized in the heavenly realm. The book of Lamentations says that to subvert a man in his cause, the Lord does not approve. Anytime a man finds his cause, I believe it's backed with every heavenly power and authority to achieve that thing. The backbone, the wherewithal, the weaponry, everything you need, the artillery you need. This is why the armor doesn't say the armor of men. It says the armor of God. I hope that's not my clock. <laughs> it says the armor of God. That means that it is actually God's armor. It means it's the armor God uses for war. And therefore, we don't put on our own armor. We put on God's armor. Because that statement there says it's God's armor. So delegated authority in the form of a warrant, license, or authorization to perform. As you travel around the world, you must become a student of time to realize. I know we may say it from the pulpits, but it is not a lie. This is truly Africa's time. It's not a cliche statement. It is not anything to be ashamed of. It is a fact that we are living in a time that God is about to raise Africa. However... However, any time there's responsibility, there has to be uh, an alignment with what it is we're supposed to do regarding that responsibility. So I want you to remember this, that delegated authority in the form of a warrant, a license, or authorization to perform. In my country, I was about to launch a product and I was 
asked to hold off by the Reserve Bank of Kenya. And because for the kind of volumes and the kind of things I'm going to do, they need me to have a license. The moment I have a license, I can operate within the perimeters of that license. And that means I must put in place certain compliance measures to be able to move in that realm and in that direction. So I'm rushing these things because I want to get to my ninth slide, which has my substance. Um, that means that there are certain resources that we all have for our assignment. And I want to just deliberate on a few of these today by using this scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6 to 8. Next slide. It says, yet we do not speak, we do speak wisdom among those who are mature. Please look at a mature neighbor. And if you're not next to one, I suggest you move to one because today we have to be in the company of maturity. Are you ready for some real talk? It says, however, not of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away, but we speak God's wisdom in a mystery. I thank God that this continent is in debt. I thank God <laughs> that this continent is having the current um, situation it's in. I thank God that people are sitting everywhere looking at the fiscal policies on every part of this continent and can't find answers. That tells me the stage has been set. There is absolutely nothing to shout or scream or be happy about when stages are not set for the children of the light to emerge. Mm -hmm. So, we speak God's wisdom in a mystery, mystery, the hidden wisdom which God predestined before the ages of our glory, the wisdom which none of the rulers of this age has understood, for if they had understood it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So what does God do? I want to show you a few things, and then I'll come home in a minute. Just take the pictures of the slides if you need to. Just next slide, please. The Bible says, for behold, I usually take three days to give you what I'm giving you in 15 minutes. So come with me. The Bible says, for behold, darkness shall cover the earth, thick darkness the peoples, but the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory shall be seen, will be seen upon you. It's not a suggestion, it's going to happen. And then Isaiah 60 verse 2 says, and nations shall come to your light. What draws nations to, your, to you is your light, not anything else but your light. However, what draws kings to you is not just your light. There's an additional level. What will draw kings to you is the brightness of your rising. By the time you get Queen Sheba to suspend her itinerary to come and visit you, there must be something about your kingship that is causing other kings to come. And that means the brightness of your rising is something that is on another level besides just coming to your light. Remember, I've had the privilege uh, one time I was at the White House and President Bush was coming down. I was a young man and I cannot explain to you the, the feeling I had as he was coming down those stairs. Um, he, was, he, was, he was in some amazing glamour. Kings have light. If you've ever been next to a president and how I know, how I know is that I've met former presidents and they don't necessarily have the same light they had while they were in power. There's something about when you are on your throne and when you have the, uh, the power and the mandate and the authority at that time, there is something about you. So kings have their light. For kings to schedule to visit you, there must be a light that is shining brighter than theirs. And therefore, no king is going to come and pay attention. No multi-billionaire is going to come pay attention to your million-dollar business if something about that business is not shining brighter than theirs. So, resources... Please pay attention. Resources are released by your light. So when I've sat to convince people to give me, and I'm saying this in all humility, I'm not saying it to try and pounce on you that I'm important. The secret I learned many years ago in how I've built some of the entities that God has given me the ability to build is that I don't have all the money and resources I need. How do I get a billionaire to pay attention to my idea? I release light. What draws them is my light. 
have had to learn their language. Nehemiah did not speak his own language. He spoke the language of the king. I've had to learn to change uh, my thought process to understand that God is not a Kenyan. Neither is he a Nigerian. That God, God holds the entire universe in the palm of his hands. And therefore, I must tap into the language of kings to be able to get resources released for my vision. Glory be to God. And so, I'm able to achieve that by understanding these basic things. So, next slide will show you. So, what does God do? God conceals it first. God hides these things. Proverbs 25, 2. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but it is the honor of kings to search it out. Right? So, I can come to Nigeria. I'm going to be around most of next week. And I'm going to be doing something significant. I had a project, I have a number, I have certain things I need to achieve before I leave Nigeria. I must leave Nigeria with about $20 million. I will leave on Friday with it. How do I know? I have never gone anywhere unprepared. I've never gone anywhere without understanding this. It doesn't matter, your number could be 100 million. And it's from Nigerians. <laughs> and so all I want you to understand is that resources are drawn to your light. Glory be to God. I don't know if I'm speaking the right English. Are you understanding me? Are you catching something? Because I, I was told I'm coming to speak to kings. Kings of industry. So I'm just giving you some very quick secrets and, and, and snippets. Um, when kings come to my rising, what should I do? Because it's the glory of God to conceal a matter. But the honor, that's a whole different dimension. Please, it's the honor of kings to search it out. Any king that does not have searching capability is going to end up in shame. And therefore, you must ask God to give you the ability to understand radar, obedience, and to be stimulated enough never to waste too much time on things. I'm confused when I find a king spending five hours on Instagram because time is an asset. And for you to spend five hours a day on Instagram, if it's not your primary source of revelation, is an error. You don't have that kind of time. Could you tell a neighbor for me, you don't have that luxury. <laughs> Something has to get you out of that bed. Something has to get you up early enough to do what needs to be done. So what do I do when kings come to my rising? God, who pours out a blessing, an idea, a heaven-born idea. Just keep going, please. Uh, a heaven-born idea. Uh-huh. Keep going. That's what I wanted. So he enables me to share the idea. What is that idea? Revelation. <laughs> so what God gives you is a revelation. An idea. The weapons of our warfare are not kernel, but they are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. So that we can deal with warped philosophies. Warped ideologies. Uh, Dr. Monroe used to tell us you cannot kill Terrorism with a bullet. Terrorism is an ideology. Ideologies must be countered with other ideologies. If you try to take out terrorism with a bullet, you will create 10 other terrorists. But if you are able to then deal with terrorism as an ideology, what the weapons of our warfare are to release new ideology, new light, that then is able to conceal that darkness. And that darkness cannot comprehend it. Come on, somebody. And so... When God gives me that, then I'm with someone who has resources because I have unlocked something for him that he didn't have before. So you must be a student of seasons and times. This is not the time, my fellow ministers of the gospel, I say this in all humility, this is not the time for Africa to go to America and display children with ash and flies on their faces for charity. This is the time for Africa to go and be able to demonstrate that we have sustainable, beautiful businesses that they can partner with us. And therefore, we are no longer living in the season of charity. We're living in the season of sustained development. <laughs> sustainable development. That means that I'm hosting a delegation of people in Kenya this end of January. Um, over 40 of them, people that were involved in very large charities to Africa, they have completely changed their models and now no longer want to look at things in that model 
They want to come and speak to people with a level of sophistication, a language they understand, and understand that if I'm going to help you with your affordable housing models, how can you give me a 25-year comfortable way in which I don't lose my investment, I make something out of it while helping you? Glory be to God. So the time for the Mr. Adeno was of this time, who used to sit in the back bench of church, has come for them to take the front seat in renegotiating banking policies, lobbying for the right policies because it is illegal for an African to pay 20% on a mortgage. Are you hearing me? Because in 20 years, you'll have bought five houses. And therefore, the church must get involved in what we call injustices. So, my final slide that I wanted to get to. So what did God do? Just keep going. What did God hide from them? God hid knowledge. I don't know about you, but in Africa right now, we're going through a second colonization. I don't want to go into too much detail. But we're in a financial colonization. People don't have to be on the ground to colonize you as long as their money is here. So I really believe that a season of God raising Daniels and Josephs has come. Esthers and Ruths must arise. This is no longer the time um, for this um, continuous harassment to happen because Josephs come when the stage is set. There's a knowledge lacking. There's something God has hidden from even our leaders in Africa. And it's going to take people that he's about to position in these interesting places to begin to release light. These people are rising, and I want to deal with three things that affect Revelation. Here are three things that are going to affect all of us. Number one, and this is something I believe in and teach a lot, environment. I came to Nigeria to speak for a good friend of mine uh, in Benin. And maybe some of you are used to certain things, but in my country, we're not used to the kind of big meetings you hold here in Nigeria. I came and I thought it was madness. I've never seen so many people in one place at the same time. I went ahead and just got on stage like I did today, and I said, praise the Lord, and I was not expecting the response I got. <laughs> I have never heard such a thunderous amen in my life. I was standing there, and I was, you know, if anyone was observing me, I was a little shaken because I have never seen so many people. So here I was getting exposure. And because of my environment, there are certain things I hadn't been exposed to. So I come, and it was absolutely intimidating to find so many people. By God's grace, we ministered and did what I had to do. And I remember learning and observing and spending time when I'd see what Bishop Oyedebo was doing. I'd say, aha. I became a student because I had never had this kind of exposure. And then I saw Papa Adeboye, what was he doing? I said, aha. I said, then, then I prayed and asked God, why did you expose me to this? He said, because I'm about to bring a revival in Kenya. Now, in 2022, I dared God. And I began to prepare for a meeting. And I kid you not, never before, since 1975, 1980, my sister is here, she can testify. My brothers are here from Kenya. We have never seen a meeting of that magnitude. Lesson, every time you get exposure, it's a picture. And every time you have a picture, it's because of something you're supposed to do. Our exposure to the houses on the hill, to state houses, are not for selfies. Every time we have exposure to higher offices, therefore something God wants to do in our midst. Are you catching something? And therefore, I think one of the things that affects environment is that um, I wrote something here that I think is very important for you, that there's something I believe in Maslow's pyramid of human needs that he puts down in the hierarchy of needs that um, incentive is a positive or negative environmental stimulus that motivates behavior. We are all products of environment. We are all products of a particular type of environment, and that's why I put the next thing there as teacher. <sighs> environment is a very key thing. It scares me. I actually am more comfortable in my boots in the marketplace than I am in the church. It scares me to be a teacher. Why? I have a pastor from Nigeria. He came from a particular part of Nigeria. Now, um, he, our ministry has transformed into a name called Ruak. 
So he spells Ruach for people. He says, I want all of you to go to Ruach. Then he spells it R-O-U-A-C-H. And all of us Kenyans are looking at him and saying, what is R-O? <laughs> and I'm sure some of you are also wondering, right? But he came from a particular teaching environment that said it is R-O. Nobody can convince him otherwise. Therefore, it tells me that the impact of your teacher in your environment created a particular bias. Our biases have come from our environments of teaching. Therefore, I believe that that brings out the word doxology. Doxology simply means how I, how I praise God. It's a very simple word. But my teacher will influence my execution, which is my praxology. How I do my things will be influenced by who has taught me how to do those things. Hmm. And then I read my Bible, and we appear before God as servants of God and begin to tell him, this is how I know that they were servants of God. He says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. And that should scare me to a very high level of fear. And when I say fear here, I mean fear, not reverence, but fear, fear. That if this is God saying, I knew you not, they say, but Lord, we prophesied in your name. We cast out demons in your name. That means it is possible for us to do the work and to miss heaven. Why? Because... It is when Elon Musk and team were launching the first rocket, and when the teams from NASA have been trying to launch rockets to the moon, there was a physicist who said that if you miss by one degree, if you launch and miss by one degree, you will actually not land on the moon, you'll land on another planet. One degree of error is enough to cause an entire continent to miss it. And therefore God says, study to show yourself approved, not to men. Unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing. So we must become scholars so that we can burst out of our environment. The same butterfly in the cocoon cannot survive in that environment. Please allow me to say this. Um, the same environment that incubated you for birth, if you stay too long, can kill you and the, and the host. So in understanding times and seasons, you must become a student of understanding what time is this because I cannot do a Moses thing in a Joshua time. Nothing wrong with Moses, but Joshua's time requires Joshua type of execution. And how much time am I spending on doing what my father did when I need to understand that I'm never supposed to do what my father did, I'm supposed to stand on their shoulders and go further. So if they built great churches, then we must build great cities. Wow. The whole aspect, I'm convinced, and no one can convince me otherwise, the entire aspect of execution must come from a place where we now will see a blend between kingship and priesthood. And I believe Africa has been very for, for very long on the leg of priesthood. But there are two legs, kings and priests. It's actually a blend. I found out the other day that if I go and uh, somebody recommended for me to go make a smoothie, I went and blended the thing. I don't like avocados. Do you have avocados here? I don't like avocados. I blended the whole thing and it was a little bland. I forgot to turn the page because I was supposed to mix it with a few things and I was asking myself, if I'm eating the avocado just like this, I might as well have used a spoon and eaten it. But when I turned the page, I realized that I was supposed to put some two teaspoons of this, three teaspoons of that, blend with some banana. The whole aspect of that smoothie tasting good and being able to be nutritious for what I needed was because it was blended. To just blend a king, a priest alone is non effective. So he has not made us priests only, he has made us kings and priests. There's a royal dimension to our existence. And Africa, I believe the answer is coming from the most powerful institution on the face of the earth, which is the church. I believe there's about to be a redefining in this Kairos moment of what it is that we are going to see coming together in that blend. And Nigeria, maybe you take it for granted as a country, but you have begun to lead the way. I'm here to make an announcement that you've been leading the way that many of us are seeing. And you do have... I'm not sure it's a good thing. You have a responsibility. You have a responsibility to package that picture and export it. Hmm. Is my thing still up? So, my teacher affects my, the way I look at things, 
And so I've tried to tell my dear pastor, it is R. He says, no, it is arrow. Because I grew up taught that this is how it's done. I pray that God will break our cocoons of thinking today. Amen. To emerge us into the place of existence and relevance. To understand why he gives us things like access. Access to power. Access to state houses. Um, our president called us all for meetings because he was giving God thanks for being elected as our president. But when we went there, we prayed in tongues. He said, I want you to do something. We've made our state house an altar. We all celebrated 5,000 of us uh, ministers that are leaders in my country. But my heart was breaking because I could hear whispers from the older men saying, we've done it. We've done it. Four weeks later, he announced his cabinet. None of us were on his cabinet. So we are relevant to him for numbers, but we're not relevant for leadership. Hmm. It takes a blend to become relevant in the places where decisions are made. Somebody say amen. amen. Please give me my last uh, piece over here so that I can give you. So you must become a scholar of these four laws. I don't have the time. My time is up. When I come back next time, <laughs> that's how you invite yourself to meetings. When I come back next time, I will deal with some of these laws in helping us understand the law of spiritual momentum. I do believe that God is not a man that he should lie. That every one of us as his children has a responsibility for growth. And growth is not comfortable. There's nothing I'm doing. Every level that God has taken me to has been very uncomfortable. And so there's a law called the law of spiritual momentum. And that means that one of the things I believe that Prof is going to do for us is that none of us is allowed to come back here next year as we are right now. Amen. That none of us is allowed to be stagnant. And as I'd say in my country, you're not allowed to have the same hairstyle next year. <laughs> That's a joke. You're not allowed to. Listen, stagnation is not acceptable in the things of the kingdom. We move from glory to glory, Romans 1.17. This is a from faith to faith dimension. And because revelation is constantly, um, God has finished in giving us truth, but we are constantly discovering truth. Amen? So there's also the law of self-control, the law of conviction, and the law of time. Let me just deal with the law of conviction for one minute, and then I'll sit down. In the law of conviction, there must be, there must be, and please, Church of Jesus Christ, hear me. There must be a conviction every one of us has that what I believe collaborates with my pattern of behavior. That means if there is a, if there is a form of lapse between what I am claiming to be and how I am doing what I'm doing, that in itself does not uh, pay tribute to the law of conviction. So if we believe we are kings, then we must behave like them. We must understand the things that God is doing. And I believe economies in this continent are going to shift and change. I believe I have a few friends that come from different uh, faiths. I've seen one family in my country build 20 mosques, one family. I believe that season is coming to the church where one family will build 20 churches and then go look for pastors. That there is a time coming when we will see economies shift and God is going to begin using us for the purposes that he has given us. I've come here as a son of the Kenyan soil to say to you, this is no longer a season of Nigeria versus Kenya. This is a season of kings and priests. That together we arise. That my victory becomes your victory. That if I'm able to understand those fiscal policies, then I can sit with your scholars here and understand how to deploy the exact same thing here. That now we've broken the barrier in my country for the next generation not to worry about shelter. That is a big accomplishment. I don't know if you understand it, but it is. That we got involved with the World Bank and with the nation and changed 47 laws. We had laws in my country, including the fact that you couldn't collect water from your roof because the colonists who put that law in 1935 were scared of the mosquito bug that was killing them by giving them malaria. But now we have changed 47 laws, 139 bylaws, to make sure that my children can live in the city without moving out of the city affordably. And rent 
to own models have become alive. And as I speak to my members, I no longer tell them this is the year to get a house because I've prayed that many years and houses don't fall from heaven. What I've understood is that a time has come as the ministers are speaking it, somebody in their congregation is getting light. Light to solve a problem. As I've done that, resources have come from all over the world to say, how can we do this? We have more than enough for Kenya. And therefore, as we get ready to launch in Nigeria, is to say, if we have it in Kenya, you must have it here. And what you have in Nigeria, we must have it in Kenya, because I am your brother. I love you with the love of Christ, and thank you for giving me this time. Thank you. So I have two testimonies. Uh, I've come to return all glory to God. Indeed, um, I'm the girl helped by God, and God is with us in ATF undoubtedly. I came in contact with Mrs. A. Okay. I came in contact with Mrs. A March 2020 through an IG life um, during the COVID period. And um, towards the end of the, that year, October, pus was coming out from my ear and blood. I went to most of the good ENTs, you could say, in Abuja, but then there was no diagnosis. I took drugs, nothing was working. And then after some time, the ear, I couldn't hear completely with the ear. We're having awesome, by the way, before then, they were already sending drugs from the village so that I could use. And uh, we're having awesome prayer call. And Mrs. A said, um, that, that evening, I had put on my earpods saying, I was going to use the earpods on that same ear. And while the prayer call was going on, I noticed that I could hear. And I removed the earpods, and I was like, it, it can't be, because I was wondering how that was going to happen on a prayer call that we're having for a summit. And from that time on till now, I could hear perfectly with the ear. Hallelujah! Secondly, um, I, had now, I had traveled to Lagos for the awesome, awesome summit youths, all expense paid by Mrs. A. So that evening, I was, that evening after the summit in her home, we're just having a casual conversation. I could remember clearly, it wasn't even a prayer. And she said, what most young ladies follow men for would come to me. I still remember that word vividly. And I came back to Abuja in December. Some, they were re reaching out to me saying, oh, um, there was this house that um, if I were interested. But I said I could, get it, I could pay within five years. And I said, how was I going to pay, seeing that my job, there was no way I could buy that house in five years, even if I was going to pay in five years. And that was how I just continued. And something I did was, um, I made mention that Mrs. A, act of the Holy Spirit, I was going to share, and woman as God intended, I was going to give out those books and see how God would come through for me. And um, in March, somebody had, two people I had helped just to um, facilitate the payment contracts. I was just a middle woman, nothing at all, had now reached out to me to say, um, oh, oh, how can they appreciate me for this work that I helped them to do? And within 72 hours, both of them sent me money that I needed to complete that house in Jabi. So it's not, it's, it's in Jabi. So for me, it's, um, the money was much. I couldn't get that money in five years. And God came true for me. So, and I really thank God for using Mrs. A. Indeed, her word did not fall to the ground. It's been from one testimony to, the te to another. Thank you. Praise God. Um, and to, to even add, on the, um, I collected the keys and every other thing on my 25th birthday. Woo! Thank you. If you know that 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 you serve a God who does the impossible, who defies what society says you should do, because it's true, people are doing it other ways, but here is the Lord giving someone landlady at 25, my sister. Ah, please, we're just getting started. Praise the Lord. Uh, wow. Thank you so much, Bishop, for that word. That was a timely word for someone like me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mrs. A, for this opportunity. Every awesome treasure event is al always an altar for me. I always tap into something, and I think my first testimony is what the bishop spoke about. But I'll quickly share my... It's been a series of testimonies. It's been back to back. I, I came in contact with Mrs. A through the book, Out of the Holy Spirit, and uh, I read the book. I was disturbed in my spirit. I was troubled for a while. 
I had a, I'm a real estate developer in the UK. There was a massive debt on my business. And uh, I was struggling that because it was COVID. So we had a lot of issues and challenges. And I remember reading the book and I saw testimony and I tapped into the same grace. Within 48 hours of what would have turned a business down in the UK, there was a massive shift. A debt of over seven figures were paid off by, it was a miracle. Uh, I shared that testimony a couple of events ago. And I remember after the testimony, there was another award event, which happened to be one of the biggest real estate awards in the UK. I came from awesome London, and uh, I sat down and I said to God, if Mrs. A would touch me, if I go to the altar, if Mrs. A would touch me, that's a sign from God to answer the prayer I was saying about the particular award. This award, I'm not qualified in any way. It's never been done in over 27 years of history of that award where a black person would win uh, the biggest property award in the UK. A lot of the nominees on that award were my mentors, people I look up to in the industry. I got into that place knowing fully well that I would never win. But I remember one word Mrs. A said that, so me, you would come and share your testimony. But I didn't really, obviously, I didn't really believe that. But my name was called Behold, I won this biggest award in the UK. <laughs> Fast forward again, business has grown beyond even my own imagination. Uh, the other thing, December last, December last year, I won another biggest award in the UK as a developer of the year which is a testament of God's backing from this, uh, from our call. And I also remember, it's been back to back. I think the biggest for me from the last, if that's what I said, every awesome treasure, even if I have to fly across the world, there's something I tap into it for. I said to God about, she said to us about lifting. It was going to be a year of the black, it was going to be a lifting. So there's a big real estate event in the world, the biggest real estate event in the world. I kid no one. I would never, I've been looking for an opportunity to have an invite to just come as a guest. I got an email two months ago as a keynote speaker at the biggest real estate event in the world. So it's just for me to say to you that God, there's a backing of God in the, in the life of Mrs. A, and I wouldn't take that for granted. Thank you so much, Ra. Praise the Lord. I have been battling earache for... For six years now, I, I went to the ENT, several ENTs, and um, I was told that the cartilage connecting the, the bones had reared out. So it was like bones to bones meeting. I was in terrible pain. And I was given some, some drugs to, to just manage the pain whenever it comes. And um, I've been battling with that since 2018. Fast forward to 2021, we had a leadership um, the leaders, the leaders in ATF had a retreat, and I was supposed to be there. The eve of that retreat, the pain was 24 hours. I was in pain for the whole day, the whole night. I couldn't sleep. It was horrid. That's the best way I could explain it. But something I learned from Mrs. A is that she doesn't take excuses. She doesn't give excuses, rather. I remembered um, in 2020, she was supposed to take... Um, one of our mentorship class, and somehow she was she wanted to use the hand sanitizer, and she, the, the nozzle was on a different direction. She didn't know. As she applied it, it went straight into her eyes. She didn't stop that class. I saw her take that class under that pain. I said to myself, I was not going to give any excuses. If my excuse doesn't have the capacity of relocating Third Mainland Bridge in Lagos, if it, has, if it doesn't have that capacity, then there, is not, then there has to be a way out of it. So I said to myself, I was going to be there. Then somehow I was determined to say that if I, get, if I just step into ATF, into the hub, I'll be home. Somehow I said to myself, I muttered it and I went. And as soon as I stepped right into ATF, I hadn't gotten into the hub, the pain ceased. Now this is the pain, this is the pain that was for 24 hours. It ceased. Fast forward to all Houston last year. After the program, I have this habit of always going through the program at the points where my kids won't disturb me and then just ruminate over it. At that point, I went to bed. That, this was about a week after all Houston. I remember Mrs. A mentioned that there was going to be, God was going to be healing his people and the meeting was prophetically declared to be the meeting of mercy. And so I went to bed. 
In the dream, I saw a man from neck down and a lady from neck down. They were dressed in white. It was as though I was in a teaching hospital, facing, lying face up. And then he brought a speculum and told the woman. And he also, he, he, he brought the speculum right into this ear, because it was the left ear giving me issues. Put it open, got a Q-tips, something that looks like Q-tips board, brought out something from my ear, showed it to her, and said, this is what is causing the blockage. And this is how you should do it. Then I woke up. There's this air test that my ENT gave me, and I practiced it, and immediately both ears gave me feedback. <laughs> I was trying to, this is a test. You, you would hold your nose, and both ears gave me feedback. And that was the first time I was getting feedback since 2017. I went to the ENT, I did an audiometry, and it confirmed that my ears are perfect. And since then, no pain. Praise God. I'd like to thank Mrs. A for giving me the opportunity to be, to, to say the testimonies because I have a lot of testimonies. My family met Mrs. A last year in April during Old Joburg. From that time until today, testimonies every day. Like in such a way that it's unbelievable. I cannot say all of them, but I'm going to be specific on two main ones because I'm a businesswoman. So I'm going to speak about the ones related to business. In 2019, we got appointed to, to make a property development, like social housing, 1,002 units. That was in December. From 2020, until 2022 last year, we could not get EIA approval. We've been getting objections left, right, and center. The community did not want us to develop because the area that we're supposed to develop at is up market, up market area. So we struggled, we got, we got objections from all corners. During SALT, 2.3 last year in July. By the way, I met Mrs. A in April. You must count. In July, during the, during the prayer session, she said, perseverance, you are getting that EAA. And then you know, I said, Ishma, how do you know that we are having a meeting next weekend? So on a Saturday, we went to a meeting. When we got there, everyone was calm and quiet. It means everybody was positive. And from that moment, we knew that we are going to get the approval, which we got in July. <laughs> Glory be to God. That is not all. Remember, we got appointed in December uh, 2019. It means January 2020, we signed a land availability Land, land, land availability agreement with the municipality because the land belongs to the municipality. Terms and conditions applied. The biggest, the biggest condition was you build, operate, and transfer back to the municipality. It means government gave us land for free, zero, we get funding, we develop, and then we transfer the land back to government. We develop with government's budget. 70% of the cost is actually a government grant. The development is about 500 million rents. But listen to this. Last year, Ju last year June, we went to all Houston with Mrs. A. Guys, do you believe in miracles? I had already signed the contract in 2020, January, all the conditions. When we came back from, um, from all Houston, I received a letter saying, uh, you, are, you are going to build, operate, and we transfer the land back to you. Yeah. 
is that possible? That government gives you a land for free, and that is generational wealth. They are saying we are giving you the land for free. For free, like miraculously, we didn't ask. We didn't beg. Hallelujah! We just got the letter. When I got the letter, I didn't know what to do. I sent Mrs. A, she was busy. You know Mrs. A is always busy. Mrs. A is always busy. I, I kept on saying, Ma, please read this letter. Because I didn't want to misunderstand. I wanted to be sure that this is what I am seeing. Because it was miraculous. That is the second testimony. Um, Mrs. A, thank you once again for giving me this opportunity. Um, I'm here to testify. God is amazing. He's faithful, and he, miracles do happen. Um, I left an amazing oil and gas job in the UK to start my own company about five years ago. Um, after years of investing all we had, uh, the company was still barely operational. Um, the breakthrough that we so desperately needed to get into the market remained elusive. So three years after startup, of course, you start a business, you think, okay, you put a war chest aside to keep uh, body and soul together, hold the, the home together until things happen. Uh, but it, it didn't happen that way. Uh, three years, things got really bad, very bad. Uh, the business was barely operational. We got to the point where we were literally living from hand to mouth. I think for me, the most uh, impactful, what, what really almost killed my spirit was having to take my daughters out, out of school in the UK, they were in private school. I had a very good job, six figures, uh, and to make things a bit more tricky, they desperately wanted me to come back. So even though things, I was taking this journey because I believed I wanted to make a difference. Uh, but, you know, you think, okay, look, God is tied into this, so things will work out fine. But there were challenges, and I thank God for sending help. So we started, it, it, uh, I had to get a job. I, I told, the, told the message, look, I, I need to work, but I'm not going to abandon my dream. So for me, I couldn't go conventional. In the UK, if you're working, you're working. That getting their money's worth, it's not. So if you want to, if, if you want to run two jobs and do it properly, I just thought, look, you know what? I'll go to Job Center Plus and get a, a menial job. I'll work at night and run my business in the afternoon. So I worked in a fact factory. It was too cumbersome. I couldn't run the business in the afternoon. I finally found a job doing traffic management. So literally when you're doing, when they, well, in the UK, when they're doing road maintenance, you know, the guys who literally put up the cones, you know, and set up the temp temporary traffic light. Yeah, that was me. I was doing that in the, in the, in the afternoon, sorry, in the night. I'm working Blue Phoenix in the afternoon. Yep, so that is typical traffic management. So I'll do that, get home, and get back to work. Um, now, my wife's life was transformed when she attended ATF. So, of course, after that, she, she became a mentee of Mrs. A. You know, I'm sitting and I'm doing my work and I, I'm listening to the prayer sessions or the, the teachings and I'm thinking, who's that? And she said, Mrs. A, pastor? She says, no. I was like, this is awesome because the word was real. It was, it was, it, it was different. So, of course, conveniently, when she's doing prayer meeting, I'll hang around and try to, you know, to uh, uh, get something from, from, from Mrs. A's teaching. But as time went along, uh, she, she, she asked me to, to attend Salt 2.0. Look, the, the whole experience had changed my mind. I was, I, was, I was in a bubble. And I needed 
a shift. We did, so of course, we paid for Salt, salt 2.0, and I was thinking, okay, if I'm going to pay this much, I am getting my money's worth. So I tuned in, I put all my, my all into it. I think it was a two-day teaching, and, and, and it completely changed my paradigm. Gave me a complete mind shift. On the last day of the program, Mrs. A singled me out, and she prayed for me and prophesied that closed doors will be opened. What happened here? I showed up, and I keyed in. After the program, my wife and I, you know, we, we to show that our faith and our work had transited to a new level, we emptied our accounts. We just thought, look, we will sow a seed and give a Thanksgiving offering. And that's what we did. We sowed the, we sowed the seed, gave an offering, and immediately things started changing. We started getting jobs. So essentially what we do is on the watership repair, we started getting jobs from uh, ships calling into West Africa. We do underwater repairs of ships. And we thought, okay, look, business has started, things are happening, the operations are going well, but as the money was coming in, it was going out. But I knew something had happened. I was convinced a shift had occurred. So what did I do? It was obvious that something had happened during SALT. After she prayed for me and said, uh, uh, short doors would be opened. So I went back to Mrs. A, like the leper that went back to say thank you to Jesus. And, and it was, I shared the testimony, but she knew that it wasn't complete. I was healed, but I wasn't whole. She prayed, and I was, I was amazed because the passion was out of this world. I was just thinking, I don't know her. Why is she crying for me? She prayed with so much passion, and, and she said, you, you will win three significant contracts. They will open doors. And immediately after that, I started having dreams, back to back. First dream, I was on a windy road. I was walking, windy road, and a man stood in front of me, huge guy, big guy. I stepped aside. He blocked my path. I stepped. He blocked. I got angry, and I pushed him. When I pushed him, he stood like a rock, and I was scared. You know when you, he stood like a rock, and I just thought, and something, it just occurred to me, strong man. And I, I just, I started sweating. I woke up, and I spoke to my wife. I said, look, <laughs> I had a dream. This is what happened. And she said, you know what? We're going to pray like Mrs. A, an awesome treasure, teach mentees how to pray. Let's get scripture. So we got scripture out and we started praying. We prayed and you know when you pray and you feel a release, I felt a release. And following night, I was transported back to the same dream, the same man, and this time I prayed and lightning came down and struck him down. He struck him down to smithereens. He was dust. And then I saw lightning striking all the way down the horizon. Of course, I knew that. Of course, that signified there was more than one strong man. All struck down. Next dream. I was in a car. Convertible sports car. I was sitting, I was in the driver's seat. My partner was sitting next to me. And... As we were driving, I was driving really fast. I saw a, 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 a traffic signal, red light. It was green. And as I was going, I was saying to myself, where we are right now is so dodgy. I pray the light doesn't go red. And you could guess, it went red. And I just thought, gosh, we're in trouble. Convertible, we had valuables in the back seat. Next thing, men came from nowhere, and they were trying to take what was ours. And I just, we were struggling with them, struggling with them, and then I just had a knowing, it's not like we had escorts, I had a knowing that we had security. And as we were struggling with them, I looked at the security and I was thinking, why aren't they helping? 
Then I had a knowing as well that said a life of prayerlessness would hamper your angels in assignment. And I thought that is true because I had always, I, I thought I could do everything on my own. So next dream. Because I had gotten into a menial job that was keeping body and soul together, and we were still trying, but the business wasn't getting there. It was, well, I, had, I knew I had been there for too long. In the dream, I woke up suddenly, traffic management job, I was sitting in my car, we were on site, and I realized that I'd been there for too long. It was like, I was in a trance. Someone had kept me in a time bubble. And I just thought, it's enough. I need to go. And I went to the site supervisor. I told him I, I, need, I wanted to And he said, no. And I said, I am going. And I left. What happened next? Doors just started opening, as Mrs. A had prophesied. Can we get the next slide, please? We, OK, we won for time. We won our first major contract, uh, downstream, uh, subsea cable laying for Google. Hallelujah. We did the cable laying, not only in Nigeria, we landed in Togo, then we landed uh, offshore Nigeria. Second major contract, Comboy Refurb, through Julius Berger for NMPC, that was it, it's different sectors. I, God is amazing. He opened doors in different sections. Because in our industry, if you want to get in, you have to display uh, 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 the fact that you've done similar work before. Final contract, offshore um, life extension on an asset for one of, I'll put it as the lower um, um, uh, offshore exploration and production uh, uh, companies. Now, it doesn't end there. It's this opened doors and kept revenues coming in. Working upstream, over 25 staff from all over the world doing some amazing things offshore. Yes, that's the, that's the downstream work. Please keep it going. Because the, yeah, just, just keep it going. To cap it, I was at All London, and Mrs. A singled me out. I know it was, it was God, because it was very random. She just said, you will attend meetings and ask yourself, that how did I get here? People will wonder, that how did you get into this room? Because really, it's... And a few weeks later, we won a contract with the biggest oil major in, in Nigeria. Hallelujah. It's Mrs. A, thank you so much. See what Hallelujah! The, see what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. Look, I dare you to see believe and Lord dream. Dream big done. and believe. Thank you, Mrs. A. Praise the Lord. Mrs. A, thank you so much for this privilege. I do not take it for granted. Before I met Mrs. Hay, I had struggled a lot with, in my career. I mean, I tried to, there was a stagnation, basically, let me just tell me that way. So I, there was a stagnation, I tried to change job, I tried to move forward, you know, there, was, there, there were delaying promotions and all that. And I remember that day, after the event, I just sent her a WhatsApp message, I just poured my heart out. And she said, um, she gave me some prayer points to pray, which I prayed. And then in my conversation with her, the Lord opened my eyes that there was a strong man, just like the last testimony that we heard. And it, the strong man started right from my background, my family and all that. So we started praying. And by April last year, I had this conviction that the Lord had set me free, you know. And then I started getting interviews, started going for interview, panel interview. I would get to the final stage and everything. And by July, everything just stopped again. And I remember I shared with her and she said, Pastor Mary, you don't give up. Keep praying. The devil is just afraid of what is, God is about to do. And so we kept praying. 
nothing was happening physically, but spiritually, I know that there was a shift. And then October, my home PA shared a testimony about getting the job. And while she was sharing that testimony in church while I was seated, I remember I heard Mrs. A's voice in my ear, the Acts of the Holy Spirit, Volume 1, where she said the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. While I was seated, I just bowed my head, thanked the Lord for what he did for my PA, and I just said, Lord, would you just re will you just reproduce what you have done for this girl in my life? And I stepped out of the church. Two weeks after I got a call from an interviewer that I had as far back as April, and they said, are you still interested in this job? I said, of course I'm interested. And then they said, we're going to set you up for another round of interview because the other role had gone. You're going to interview you for another role, blah, blah, blah. And I said, okay, I will give it a try. Let's set up an interview. So I was going home that day. And I remember feeling so bored in that, God, would I have to go through another level of interview? And I heard God said, you're just complaining. Ask me what you want. Right there in the car, and I just said, God, would you just, I just want my offer letter. I don't want to do an interview, God. I know you can do it. Just get me my offer letter and let me move on. Remember, they already told me I'm going to have an interview in the next one week. So the following day, in my office, I got an email with my offer letter. <laughs> interview scrapped. <laughs> Hallelujah. My second testimony is this. I host a, an interdenominational women conference in Lagos. We started 10 years ago. And then 2021, September edition, Mrs. Hay was our keynote speaker. So I remember that she came in, and when she held the microphone, she said, I am not here to preach. I'm here for you to have an encounter. And that was the beginning of the change, not just on that day, but also in my life. So she took the microphone, and then she started preaching. And while, while I was seated, I just saw that there was an unusual movement in the congregation. I saw my protocols, I saw some of the hushers. You know, if you've been watching me, I haven't attended any of our meetings before then, but I mean, I've watched a, a lot of our YouTube videos you would see that there were encounters when she ministered. So I thought it was one of those encounters that people were just having an experience. But it, it persisted. We didn't know what was happening. Then she was preaching, and then suddenly she said, we should shout the name Jesus three times. So we did. Now, after the program, I got a report. Apparently, while she was preaching, one of the women that was invited for the program right where she was seated, slumped and died. There were medical personnel in the congregation. They confirmed that she was dead. No pulse, no heartbeat while she was preaching. They tried hard, they could CPR, everything they could try. And then when the Holy Spirit, through her, said, shout the name Jesus, at the third time, the woman sneezed and came back to life. She literally came back to life. And so I requested that people should check on her. And to the glory of God, up to today, she's healed and healthy. Hallelujah. Good evening, Mrs. A. This is my attempt to describe what I experienced at All Houston in the overflow. As soon as you mentioned that God was visiting the overflow, everybody, everywhere just scattered. Everybody was flat on their faces. Even the men. I had checked them in that day. So I saw people that were put together. They were well put together. But as soon as you said the word from the main auditorium, even the men were flat on their faces. The women were screaming, people were crying. It was Holy Ghost chaos. And I just experienced God's raw power in that place. Some of them were there on the floor till the event was over. God was touching lives doing a deep work in their lives. And I saw it and I, 
I'm so grateful that I experienced that. It's not what can be. We can't, there's no way I can describe it. But the people that had the encounters, maybe they can put it in a better way. But I saw God in a whole new light. God is merciful and gracious to us in ATF. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Susan Adeola Vincent, and I would just like to share what God did for me um, during service today. I um, sprained my right, my right wrist on Thursday. It was so swollen and I couldn't move these hands. And at some point I was sharing with my friend and sister, you know, she um, didn't think I could make it to church today. And I told her that it doesn't matter how painful it is, because I was in so much pain, that I was still going to come to church today. And honestly, coming to, it was even, it was just God's faithfulness because I got to church still in pain, the hand was swollen. I couldn't move it, I could not, I just kept holding it this way. But during service, I mean, at some point, I didn't know when I screamed out loud, but I think the ambience and everything like, or what was going on, um, people didn't hear. I just said, I can lift my hands, you know. During service, the pain disappeared. It didn't even feel like there was anything. And before the end of service, look at the hand that was swollen. I mean, swollen and immobile. I could not move this hand. But look at it all gone before the end of service. The pain gone, the swelling gone, and the wrist that I couldn't turn or move, you can see for yourself. I'm just so thankful to God, and I just want to bless the name of the Lord. I could not contain this, and I had to share it. Thank you so much. God bless you, and God bless the person that you used today. Praise God. My name is Rachel Adeoti and I'm testifying to the goodness of God because God healed me from a chronic back pain during all London last year. I've had back pain for well over a year before the time that I came for all London and the pain started when I gave birth to my son. I had an injection in my back, epidural injection to help with pain during the labor. After delivery, I carried on having this back pain and it literally became a part of my life. It could be so bad on some days that I wouldn't be able to stand upright. You know, sometimes after my shifts at work, I would be bent over on my way to work. So I came to all London last year with the pain. I was in pain when I came. But I didn't actually come expecting healing because I didn't know that that was going to be part of the package. I came because I wanted to listen to Mrs. A because she's someone that I deeply, deeply respect. But when I walked into the hall, I heard Mrs. A dissecting the scriptures. You know, she was talking about kings, priests, like she was really, you know, dissecting the scriptures. So I sat, I listened, and you know, after the ministration, she prayed. She started praying for people. She laid hands on, on some people. She didn't lay hands on me, but I fell. I don't know how it happened. When I stood up, I noticed that the back pain had gone, like it had gone. It was an instant miracle, but you know, somehow in my mind, I was like, is this for real? Is this how miracles happen? So I waited. I waited for months to see if the pain was going to come back. The pain didn't come back. And it's been well over a year after now and the pain hasn't come back and is not going to come back. So I'm just, you know, testifying to the goodness of God and letting people know that, yeah, God still does miracles. God still heals. And I hope this encourages somebody. Praise God. wave your hands bless the Lord thank you wow supernatural is real and it's so close to us it's not far away celebrate the Lord one more time hallelujah and if you can just stretch your hands to pastor a the architect of heaven just bless us my first time meeting you <laughs> yes just bless the Lord thank you ma just speak to her so much is coming tonight and just bless her let the Lord just you know keep her sustain her if you're 
and love her, say something. Come on. Thank you, Father. God, we worship you. What you've done in this place. Turn it to an altar, an altar, an altar. Yes, Lord, my worship calls you, my heart calls you, my situation from wherever you are calls you, calls you, calls you, calls you. your heavens and the earth will hear. Speak from your heavens and the earth will hear. Speak from your heaven and the earth will hear. Come here from your heaven, my voice from the earth, cause my own is calling you. My altar is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you. <laughs> My altar is calling Speak from the heavens. Oh, speak from the heavens, and the earth will hear. Come here. Come here from the heavens, my voice from the earth. Oh, speak. Oh, speak from the heavens, and the earth will hear. Come here. Earth and the earth will 
continue. Don't speak from your heaven. Don't speak, Lord. Speak to me. I'm on your altar. Right where I am. Well, here, come here. From the heavens, my voice. Turn the place to an altar. Oh, speak. And the earth will hear me. Come hear me. My voice. My altar is calling you. My altar is calling you. Oh, God.
Sons, all Abuja, all Abuja, Abuja, the capital city, Abuja, your day has come. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, somebody speak to him. I have entered the holy of holies through my Jesus, who is the Word of God. Through my Jesus, who is the firstborn. Through my Jesus, through His blood.
the Lamb of God. Who is the Lamb of God? To my Jesus. Time I belong, I belong to the family. I am standing in the covenant. That's your ladder. the Lord open the eye of my spirit and I may see the reality of the times and seasons like Habakkuk Habakkuk that I may see things to come as a king to birth these things but as a prophet that my spirit eyes may see and what I see is what I become the more I see the more I become spirit eyes open open in this time where solution is needed in this time where answers answers are falling from heaven I choose to be an answer <laughs> I choose to be a solution in this kingdom age of the church in this apostolic age of the body of Christ yeah. spirit eyes open open spirit ears open eyes of my spirit I can hear the sound of a new church marching yes I see I see them coming in their thousands coming from a distance walking on the earth yes sing it I can see I can see with the eyes with the eyes of my spirit I can hear I can hear The sound of a new church purging <laughs> Yes I see See them coming They're coming, coming in the thousands Coming from a distance Coming from a distance Walking on the earth Walking on the earth Yes I can hear I can hear With the ears of my spirit With the ears of my spirit Sound of cushion, I can hear the sound of rushing, rushing waters. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. Hey. These are the days of your spirit. Nations will be willing. Nations will be willing. People will be willing. People will be willing. Oh. Yeah. 
Mantles will fall and are falling already. Different kinds of mantles. Each mantle unique, diverse. Its operation is different. It shows how unique we are. Everyone carrying his own expression of God. Dimensions of God. Oh, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. As we sing this last song.
Sons have been given to the church once again. Mantles have been given to the church once again. Mandates have been given to the church once again. Visions have been restored to the church once again. For the kings to be born, for the mantles to return, for the church to become like a part of the ancient. For the church to become hey. like the tree hey. of the age hey. For the church hey. to arise hey. with the victory of King Oh Adi Adi Oh Adi Oh Adi Oh Adi Adi Oh Oh Adi Adi Oh Adi Adi Oh Adi Oh Adi Adi Oh Adi Adi Oh Adi Oh 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 Church. Once again, chorus are arising from Abuja. Once again, Daniels are arising with the keys of the season. But the Kaias are arising from the gates of the church. Mantles have been restored to the church once again. For the church to become a tabernacle of England. For the altar to become a the altar of Jerusalem for the church hey. to arise hey. for the church hey. to be born hey. for the kings hey. to mature hey. for the sons hey. to be born hey. for Daniel, hey. Hey. David, hey. Joseph, hey. Hey. Zacharias, hey. Israel, hey. Hey. arise, hey. Naomi, hey. Olajimoke Adenowo is a multiple award-winning architect with over three decades of industry experience. Described as Africa's star architect and trailblazer when profiled by CNN and the BBC, she is one of Africa's most outstanding architects and the only female in this elite category. 
christened the face of architecture in Nigeria by The Guardian. She has been featured in the world's foremost architectural journal, Architectural Record, as well as Forbes Woman and Fortune Magazine. In 2013, she was inducted into the Hall of Fame of Personalities of Black Ancestry by the University of West England, Bristol, among other global personalities of Black heritage. She is a quintessential polymath, chartered architect, academic laureate, philanthropist, entrepreneur, chartered arbitrator, author, and radio show host. She is also a member of the International Coalition of Apostolic Leaders. After gaining admission into Obafemi Awolowo University, Leife, at the age of 14, she acquired the first distinction in the Master of Science in Architecture in the university's history. She is also an alumnus of several institutions, including the Harvard Kennedy School of Government, the Yale School of Management, MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, the IESC Business School, amongst other professional affiliations. She is a fellow of the Nigerian Institute of Architects. Starting her career at Femi Majeku Dumi Associates, where she had the privilege of designing the Federal Ministry of Finance headquarters in Abuja, in 1994, she founded her own multi-award winning architecture firm, AD Consulting, which also specializes in master planning of eco-sensitive developments. AD Consulting is Nigeria's most internationally awarded firm. She has been the principal partner from inception to date. In 1999, her passion for raising transformational leaders led her to establish the faith-based philanthropy Awesome Treasures Foundation, recognized by the United Nations and the United States Congress, and affiliated to the Edmond Dave Rothschild Foundation Family Philanthropy Platform. With a focus on young people and women, Awesome Treasures Foundation raises transformational leaders for peace and advancement. The foundation operates on five continents, with initiatives impacting millions. Since 2011, she has hosted her own syndicated radio program and podcast on leadership called Voice of Change. She has been honored with numerous awards for her architecture and philanthropy. These include the Forbes Woman Africa Entrepreneur of the Year 2020, the New African Business Woman of the Year Award 2015, the Cambridge African Society Award, among several others. Olajimo Kade Noah is recognized as one of Africa's 50 most powerful women by Forbes Woman Africa, Africa's most inspiring businesswoman by the La Batisseur des Economies de l'Afrique, amongst others. She is featured prominently in Agatha Toromanov's Raising the Roof, a landmark publication on the world's greatest female architects in history. She is also the first black architect to be published by the world's leading art, architecture, and design publishers, Rizzoli. In 2019, she was appointed a visiting professor at the Technische Universität München, Germany's leading architectural program, where she was honored as a laureate and a guest scientist at the Chair of Theory, History of Architecture, and Art and Design. Her academic articles have been published by leading architectural publishing houses, and her 12 published books include her first work of fiction, Beyond My Dreams, which has a cult following. She's also the author of Acts of the Holy Spirit, Volumes 1 and 2, which are compilations of over 200 verified divine interventions through her kingdom service, and woman as God intended. She is a public speaker at international summits and conferences, including the McKinsey & Co. Leadership Forum, SOLVE at MIT, Cambridge University African Society, the Global Women's Forum, House der Kunst Munich, the Institutes of Directors, and several other platforms. Olajimoke has served on the jury and panels of global initiatives, such as the Cartier Initiative for Women Awards. She serves on the boards of corporate entities, educational institutions, and charitable foundations. She is married to Ulukuridi, and they are blessed with two men. Ladies and gentlemen, Olajimoke Adenowo. And we're going to go into the word now, and in the time of ministration, and the atmosphere is about to change completely, 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 again, again. Uh, somebody was saying on the prayer call last night, do you want to quickly come and say what they were saying? Give her a mic. So she stands there. And they were talking about all Houston, where Boke was. Boke, I think I remember what I said to you, was you are going to be great. And until you are great, I won't let go of you, which means if you are that great, I may kick you out soon because you're becoming pretty great. So <laughs> well, I said, until you're great, I will not let go of you. And these things happen. Every word, if it sounds like a joke, it's not a joke. I say when a prophet jokes, the joke is important. If people fly from all over the world, there is a reason. You can relax. Good. You are going to say something about Houston very quickly. 
Thank you, ma. So we're on prayer call um, last week, and then one of us in Houston was giving us a testimony because she was in the overflow as an usher. That, um, so I think we're almost wrap, uh, wrapping up the program. And Mrs. Day said something, because I was also there. Mrs. Day said something about the overflow. She wasn't there. She was in the main hall with us and said that, you know, the power of God will fall on the people in the overflow. Funlola said that everybody, and to give you context, that overflow started getting filled at about 15 minutes after we started the program. So to give you context on how full it was, she said everybody was slain in the spirit. And Mrs. Day was in the main hall with all of us. So it, it, was just, it was just amazing. What I'm trying to say is that I don't have to come to you because I can't. We, there were testimonies of people being healed in England too without me going there. I don't have to come to you. We don't have time to play testimonies. We play testimonies. That's why we write books. Because that's the best way to go about it. But I want you to know that the Holy Spirit will touch you where you are. You understand? Because there are different kinds of people. What I do is host the presence of God. So it's not about how smart I am, or maybe I can sing. So I will dismember Apostle Dab's song, but still God will fall on you. Do you understand? And he already said, it. God said to me, it's a meeting of immersion and impartation. Look how full the hall is in Abuja. We don't stay here. First, give yourselves a hand for being here. Because this is a watershed. This is a landmark. You are here from London now, from Kea and her husband. My goodness, I didn't know you were coming. God said to me in Houston, it's a meeting of mercy. I want us to welcome the Holy Spirit with the song Gashina. That's why Kesing, that's how I knew you. I, I, I did some surgery on his song in our church. And somebody had to tag him on Instagram. And Mama is, <laughs> I don't know, doing something in your song. Can we rise up and welcome the Holy Spirit in this place? We need to tell you the meaning. It's a Hausa song, but Kesing, what's the meaning? It means he is here. He is here. Who is here? Jesus. Thank you. If you know he's here, that attitude will show as he takes this song.
Enjoy the presence of God. And this is not enjoy the presence of God, the kind you do and you're not changed. And they tell you, you'll never be the same again. This is not a cliche situation. You must have proof. Now, if you see men crying, it's because there's a move of love. Do you understand? So when the lady who said the testimony wasn't Debola, that's why she didn't know what to say. She said, I saw people come in well put together. You were there in Houston. Lying flat on the floor, even the men were crying. And they keep telling me, even the men cry. I'm like, do men not have tear ducts? I don't understand. Are they not men to? No, certainly, brush. I see the words mercy. Again, God wants to show us mercy. You are living with what you did not qualify for. And you can never qualify for. Because if you begin to clean up your act for another hundred years, you can't get there. Mm. 
have shown mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. Can I hear you sing to God? I'm the one. You have shown mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. started please um please be seated if you may the theme of today's message is sons of god sons of god it's a word that has sorry a phrase that has become a cliche but has a deep meaning number one who are sons sons are not children ayo is a pediatrician from the uk children are distinct from sons sons are those who have attained a level of maturity that they can function with the power of attorney in the name of the father are you getting that? A son can operate your bank account when he's not there. Yeah. That's the real meaning of the Hebrew word that says ben. It means when the son becomes of age, when you think you've cascaded the vision to the point that your son has caught it, you take him to the proper people, to your investment banker, to your real estate agent, to everywhere where your deposits, where your inheritance for the next generation lies, and you say, this is now my son. Then you put your signet on his finger. And he can sign on your behalf. He can lose and he can bind on your behalf. A son of God is not a child of God. A lot of us are children of God, but God has few sons. I realized very recently that when I teach, I teach at a certain level that people have to keep unpacking and unpacking. So I will try and unpack a bit today what I can unpack. So when I was saying to Mr. Ladele and he said I singled him out, case strings, I was functioning as a son. I didn't hear anything from God. I'm being very honest. I just thought how does God turn, uh, how does the enemy think he can turn a first class brain? To, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with arranging traffic cones. It's not just a fit for him. Do you see what I'm saying? There is growth. He had, I've grown that long time ago. So he was on Zoom. And I just began to say as a son, as a prophet who functions in the creative prophetic, that you know what? Rise! Get up from that place. And when it began to happen, I told him, I said, it's a test. I knew because I just functioned out of order and pulled what was not yet time and handed it over to him. So it was now left to him to prove that he could handle it. Do you see what I'm saying? Ah, oh. That's why that song, I can see with the eyes of my spirit, means so much to me. Because I see a new church emerging, a church of sons and not a son church of children. Children keep going, give me, give me, give me. And when they're not satisfied, there is no peace in the house. A son serves. A son knows the mind of the father. The father does not have to begin to dictate, begin to say every time there's an assignment. A son thinks like the father. So say Detola, for instance, when we were beginning to plan all Abuja, she'll say things like, Mama, I know what you're going to say. I'm just asking. I said, why are you asking? I said, I know you're going to say no. Should we bring uh, so something on? I said, okay, no. You knew I, I was going to say no. That means she's beginning to think like me. Who is a son? If you look at Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14, we see the desire of God. God is desirous of a family. So you see, single man, single woman, why you want to be in a family, the desire comes from your father. God wants to be part of a family. He says in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, whom the whole family, the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Okay, if we say who is the family on earth, what would you say? Who is God's family on earth? 
the church. How about the family in heaven? You see, we skip over these things because we feel it's too complicated. I don't understand John 3.16. I'm battling with the family in heaven. But for, for a time, I thought it was the dearly departed, like my own late father who have passed over, who are now the family in heaven. But it's not so. God has a heavenly family, an earthly family. How would we know, Pastor Bolade, if he has a heavenly family? We want to find out if at any time he calls anybody in heaven sons. That's how. And we see that the very first time we see the phrase sons of God, since we're being used, is in Genesis chapter 6 verse 2. It says, when the sons of God saw that the sons of the, the daughters of men were fair. I don't want to talk there, but I, 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 I just want you to know that in, hey, supernatural beings are asexual. So they could have become women to come and marry men. But you know, they understood what they had to become. Ambassador Amy understands what I'm saying. Because it was the first time God was creating the female gender. It had never been, madam. So they were Elohim in heaven. But they had never seen a female. Because God came and said, it is not good for man to be alone. Let me do a version 2.0. You understand? That has curves in the right place. Here in the right place. Not here, you know what I'm saying? Not here. Here. Here in the right place. Who is to be desired and admired and continually pursued. Then he brought out a woman. So for the first time, creation was seen womanhood. You see, I'm saying that so that you don't look down on yourself. Because some guy says he's not doing it again. God just saved you. He said he take it away the first so that he may establish the second. Yeah. The sons of God saw that the daughters of men were fair. Who then are the sons of God? You're wondering. We see it again in Genesis 6, 4. But then when you go to Job chapter 38, verse 4, or let's look verse 7 because of the time. And you know that the Bible wasn't written in that order. Most people feel that the book of Job predates the books of Moses. It says, when the, man, the morning stands sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. This was God taking Job through a, a debate. Job had been complaining, and God was saying, you can only complain as much as you know. Because you were not there when the foundations of the earth were laid. And a group of beings called the sons of God saw what I wanted to do. And they shouted for joy because they saw a generation coming. They shouted for joy because they saw a group of people rising in Africa. They shouted for joy because they saw a set of people who understand the mandate rising out of all Abuja. And they said, because there is no time there, I was that, so it might take a while. But we see something. We see something. I can see with the eyes of my spirit. This is the way I sing it. I can see a new church rising. Yes, I know they're coming from the distance. They're coming from afar. They're coming from afar. Oh, season of the ancient. Oh, these are the days of your power. you see they saw that day they shouted for joy who are these sons of God we need to dial back a little bit again and go to Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and God said let us make man in our own image and after our likeness to save time because we don't have time most people say oh he was talking to the Trinity but he was talking here to the heavenly council the heavenly family the Elohim Elohim in the Hebrew, Aramaic, means deities. But when it gets to the plural, it's talking about El Elohim, El Elyon, God Most High. So it's talking about people who carry the DNA of God. However, there's only one Supreme God. 
And God said to his counsel, let us make man in our own image. Image means shadow, phantom, reflection. So when you look in the mirror, so you can see my image in the TV screen. That's my image, it's not me. But he said, let us make him also after our likeness. Let him carry our typology. Like in biology, it will be our species. Let him carry our DNA. That is so powerful. You need to unpack that. DNA is the mystery of potential. You cannot do beyond your DNA, but you can do below it. So DNA talks to your potential, but not necessarily your destiny. So when an eagle is hatched, an eagle, it has the power and the capacity to soar, but it may never soar. So you have the capacity to be a son of God, but will you? So today you may not look like one, feel like one, taste like one, smell like one, but the DNA is in you. They say there's more hope for a living dog than a dead lion. At least you have the DNA. There's no way an elephant can be, give birth to a dog. Do you see? If you are born of God, the potential exists that one day you can be like him. Let me explain what I mean. DNA, like I said, is about potential. The Holy Spirit said to me today, tell them that a lot of what they're going through is because they refuse to exhibit their DNA. It will hit you. When an eagle is hatched, it stays in the nest for a while and the mother eagle actually makes it comfortable. But at a point when the mother eagle sees your time has come to soar, she comes and she destroys the nest that she built herself. She destroys the comfort zone. Are you hearing perseverance? She makes it hot for the eagle. He is no longer comfortable. His time has come, he needs to leave. And when he refuses to leave, she makes it impossible for him to stay. Some people, your time has come in that job, but you refuse to leave. So when God has told you your time has come, when that first nudge comes, it comes gently. Then you refuse to listen, then the whole place becomes like a cauldron. That's when you know it's time to leave that system. Listen to me. She tears the nest. And then she pushes the eagle out. At that point, the, baby, the eaglet feels, I'm going to die. This is a witch. Well, I mean, from the cliff, how am I supposed to make it? From my clothes has feathers. So it begins to flap out of not knowing what to do. And when it begins to flap, it discovers, my goodness, these things were meant for flying. There's so much God has given you, you don't even know the reason for it. Some of you think, well, it's just to make a living, to blow, so that the people from the village I came from can know who I am. And God is saying, you, you are meant to be a son. <laughs> hey, he's talking about your potential, your capability, your capacity. He allows us to go through these things so we might discover who we are, develop that potential, then deploy it. Because the nations are waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. Is God taking a risk in saying, let us make man in our own image and after our own likeness? Verse 27, 28, he says, male and female created him them. And that word create, Zubi, means he prepared them. You see, English can be so weak. It's not like, it's not like Yoruba, it's not like Hausa, it's not like Igbo. It does not carry, you know, I would say it's not by, like, Ila, it's not like Kikuyu, it's not like, good. It doesn't carry the connotation. He said, male and female, God prepared them. That is what, that's what it says in the Young's literal translation. That means he did not only make us, he prepared us. He prepared us not for 1820. He prepared us for 2023 with an election coming in February. I have to go there. We're in Abuja. He prepared us for 2023 with the dollar red being 800 to 1. He prepared us. Because he saw it ahead. 
He didn't prepare only the male gender. He prepared also the female gender. Because he has prepared, he was not afraid. It's like a coach. When you have coached your athlete, then you see lesser, lesser athletes about to compete. Your heart is not racing when they say onto your max, get set. You are like, you may not even watch the race. Because it's a practice race. And there you are thinking this thing is what is going to kill me. And God is saying, I have prepared you. You don't get how God does things. He first sets the end from the beginning. So the mess you are in now is part of the plan. He knew. So he sets the end from the beginning. Then he prepares the vessel that can handle the mess of 2023. You understand? So he looks at 2023. He looks at the doctor's report you'll be given. Then he dials back 40 years. And then he creates the woman that can handle that doctor's report. The man that can handle that doctor's report. The one that can laugh in the face of it and say it's a joke. <laughs> what did he prepare us for? He prepared us for dominion. Dominion in every sphere of life. He said, let them have dominion. Let's be honest. Well, if you've raised a child before, one of the first words they learn is what? No. Yeah, it's not yes. They know no before yes. What it means is that every part of mankind hates being told what to do. Get so he said, no. I'm like, who told? Is this rebellion? It's not rebellion. It's called freedom. Free dominion. In that that's where freedom comes from. Why do you want to be wealthy? You want to be wealthy because you don't want anybody to tell you what to do. You want to see a meeting and go in Sweden or the UK and said, I'm going. So when you got to BA, what did you say? I'm a child of the living God. I go to church. Open the door. You gave them pounds and they opened and you entered. That is why everybody wants money, but you don't know. You want the freedom of dominion. You want that nobody dictates to you where you go, how you go. You want options. Ah, on what morning, Thursday that was coming, they bought an 11 a.m. ticket. I said, I can't do it. I woke up at 4, I slept at 4 a.m. And had the option at 2 a.m. That's all I got another ticket for what? 5.20, you want the 5.20, you want the 6.20. If the money was a problem, I'm on, I will enter the level. Mm -hmm. Some people are at another level. They'll say, I'll come whenever. It means that they have a private jet. That's it. If I, okay, I'll just come, go back to Lagos, and I'll be back with you the next day. It's coming. If it's needed. If it's needed. <laughs> so he said, let them have dominion. Wait, oh. Over the fish of the sea. Over the fowl of the air. And over every living thing that moved upon the earth. It does not mention any human being here. So that desire to dominate other human beings is witchcraft. To make other human beings do what you want. But I'm going somewhere. Oh, the Berean translation and every translation says, and over the earth itself. So not only are we to have dominion over what is on the earth, we're to have dominion over the earth itself. And you're wondering, the earth itself? I remember when I first spoke in Algebraic, I think Perseverance was a bit afraid of me because I was speaking about the earth. And it was later in Houston, she said, ah, I didn't understand. Because, you know, they, they know Sangomas, they know all that. And I was coming directly into Sangoma territory and saying, some people have not lost the ability to master the earth. Why? Because the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. So since God gave man dominion over the earth, yes, some DBS master the earth. Some sorcerers master the earth. But the Christians don't understand how to master the earth. So they will take the sand because they know there's a mystery in the sand. The sand is all over the earth. And speak to the sand and say, you know what? Eh? Hezekiah is in the Netherlands. Sand! So it exists. What was happening to patients was not an airache. It was a temptation to make her take the herbs from the village. She's from Maiduguri, or no, you know what that means. It had nothing to do with an earache. It was to push her until she would take those herbs. The very day the herbs arrived in Abuja is the day she was healed of otitis media.
There is nothing, there is no one like you, are we, my There is nothing, there is no one like you. There is nothing, there is no one like you at all, Farati. There is nothing, there is no one like you. God loves us so much. I need to remind you that you are loved. Because the circumstances of your life are trying to tell you, you are not loved. Say God created the heavens, he created the earth. Then in verse 2, he said, The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And then God looked and said, Let there be light. God hates chaos, God hates anarchy. And the heavenly council sat down and said, Who will create order? Who will bring light to the darkness? Because that word light in the Hebrew. It's actually let there be order. The disorder in Africa is what is not letting Africa grow. We have tremendous potential. We can just be very disorderly. We cannot just wait for our turn. Maybe. Are you listening? So the heavenly council said we can trust a race to do it. If they are in our image and carry our DNA, they can pull it off. I'm sure you understand. We're not leaving them empty-handed because we know that a being has been cast down to the earth and is roaming the earth. But they have what it takes to deal with them. Now let me explain to you, between you and the devil, it is very personal, Pastor Gwale. If you think, if I don't disturb him, he won't disturb me, it's a lie. The devil looked at God and said, I will be like the most high. I will be like, he wanted to be like God. He rebelled, God cast him to the earth, and he was treading on the dust of the earth. Then God insulted him by coming and taking the dust from under his feet and creating a being out of it. Then he made the being like him. So the devil looks at you every day and says, this is what I wanted. And look at the feeble people you gave it to. When I am shining like light, these ones need to bathe every day or else they will smell. How could you use these people? Ah. There is nothing, there is no one like you. Is your mind entering into the mystery of love? The mystery of how God cares for you. The mystery of how much has been loaded into you. The mystery of how much you carry. The family on earth is to master the earth on behalf of the family in heaven. The family in heaven will take a decision. The family on earth will do it. That's why it says, let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is a son of God. Someone so submitted to the will of God that it is the will of God that he sees done in heaven that he does on earth. We'll go through it. <laughs> there are watchers watching in the council of heaven. The Bible says the heavens, the heavens of heavens, they've been given to God. The earth belongs to you and me. That means the February 23, 2023 election belongs to you and me. Oh, better get it. I don't know if you have your PVC or not, or what is still being done. But you have to know that whatever happens in your country, the church allowed it. I will say it again. Whatever happens in your country, the church allowed it. 
Now, I don't belong to any political party. And I don't carry any card. And I'm not even, I'm not apolitical. I will vote. But sometimes in Africa, you give too much credence to who is president. You've forgotten you have a central bank governor. I will go there. Who appointed the central bank governor? Was it not the government before? We are fixated on parties. Was it not the government before? Who is in charge of monetary fiscal policies? Not the minister of finance. It's the chancellor of the exchequer. Wake up. Understand policy. Understand legislation. Yeah. Understand how the country runs. So when people yeah. begin to talk, you two don't begin to talk nonsense with them. The CPN governor can do more damage to you right now. Yeah. Said, master the earth. Decide what goes. Daniel 4, 16 and 17. Daniel is interceding for his nation. And an angel appears and says to him, that we have made a decree about this man already. His fate is decided. Nebuchadnezzar. Let his heart be changed from man's and let a beast's heart be given unto him. And let seven seasons pass over him. Verse 17. This matter is by the decree of a council called the watchers. And the demand by the word of what? The holy ones, the Elohim. We are demanding that Nebuchadnezzar has become a problem. Who has God decided has become a problem in Kenya or in Nigeria? And what are you going to do about it? Regardless of your political affiliation, you should be able to say, I have heard heaven. This is what is going to happen next. I don't care about tribe. I don't care about tongue. I care about what God wants. I'm a reflector. I am an imager. Whatever I see God doing, that is what I do. Even the baby agrees. He says that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men. And he gives it to whomsoever he pleases. Now who does he please to give it to? February 2023. Find out. Give it to that person. I said a child of God is different from a son of God. A child goes for what they want. A son goes for what the father wants. I abide under your anointing. I abide under your control. I abide under your anointing. I abide under your control. I stay in your arms, Lord Jesus. I know who I am saved. Under your anointing, I abide under your control. I see the angels of God moving in that left wing. That area you are in, the power of God is beginning to intensify, intensify. I follow what God is doing. There is no time of ministration, time of the word, so that you can doze and then wake up during the time of ministration that, oh, it's time to pray. No, it's one continuum. Joy Williams, you are here. You came from the UK. It's not a prophetic word. I know that she came from the UK is what I'm saying. Okay. Hmm. What she has come for she's believing God for is an impartation. I can't ask. I said if you take testimonies we will leave. Dr. Dosumu is here. If he talks about how God imparted him in the meeting I was in, he got back to wait because I'm answering the question, where are we meant to dominate? He got back to his hospital that he runs. And when you are lying to him about a diagnosis, the Holy Spirit will tell him what it is. Somebody died and needed to be resuscitated. They came back. 
Somebody said to me, which church is this? I said, it's a hospital. That's why Bishop said, it doesn't, where did that distinction come from? <clears throat> where to reflect in every sphere. You see, Zechariah 1.18, it talks about, Zechariah said, who are these? It said, these are the horns. Yeah. That scattered Jerusalem and Judah, that they could not lift up their heads. Then he said, in one word, what are these? Isn't that the four horns that will not let the foreign exchange market in Nigeria even make sense? These are the four horns that have made healthcare systems scatter. This governance is deep. It affects every area of your life. So you can't say, I'm not voting. Anybody they like, they put there anyway. Ah, you will vote. Oh. <laughs> these are the horns which have scattered Judah so that no man did lift up his head. But these are come to fray them. Who has come to fray them? To cast out the horns of the Gentiles which lifted up their horn over the land to scatter it. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. The word carpenters is four engravers, four artificers, four skilled men. God is going to use the skill of the church to scatter, yeah. to fray, yeah. to destroy yeah. on every mountain yeah. the edifices of the enemy. Now understand it, the skill, because they're engravers. You see, they use engravers because it's an engraver that fixes your Breguet watch, your Rolex watch. It is an engraver. It is those who have the eye for the minutest detail, not those who feel that it doesn't really matter, it doesn't worth it, idea is need. No, those who know, who are excellent, they were like that in the church, now idea is need. You don't need to practice like daps, the Lord will take it from you. That's how it was when we gave our life to Christ. You know, now we were in the same fellowship, but I was there before you and I left. You'll be hearing things like, the Lord gave me a song. You say, sing it. We are in Waka, in Waka, in Waka, in Waka. It's only it's one chord, Abby. In Waka, in Waka, in Waka, in Waka. I'm not making fun of anybody. No skill. And we were supposed to leave, cool it down, slow it down. Watch out for that. Ah, I said, this Christian race will be tough. <laughs> Darling Jesus. And then, it was all you know who they were. They will wear the same uniform is safari suit and safari skirt. If you don't know what a safari skirt is, see me later. I will tell you. Now, you need skill because the next generation is not going for all that. If you don't have skill, they don't want it. You go to church every day, they want to ask, so why did we go? What did we learn? What happened? There's no, we go because that's what we do in this house. You to understand what is going to happen to you today, you will look at Exodus chapter 31, verse 2 and 3. The first time we hear of the Holy Spirit filling anybody, it was in the marketplace. It was Bezalel. It was not in the church. It was not in the pulpit. See, I have called by name Bezalel, Bezalel the son of Uri, the son of all and of the tribe of Judah. He said, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship. What God is saying to you, king and priest, is that if you are anointed, they should know at your work. If you are anointed, the board should know. If you are anointed, your clients should know. I ask people that if you needed to have a brain tumor operated on, who would you choose? A Christian doctor, a Hindu, or a Muslim neurosurgeon, and then they are looking at me because they think it's a trick question. Answer now, they say the best. I know, choose an anointed one now. One who can speak in tongues, so as it's cutting your brain and dismembering your medulla of Langata, I say, Shashara, Pakata, Kata, but it covers it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm ending. Uh -huh. So, how then do we become the sons of God? I have to say, how then? Because the Bible says in John 1, 12, for as many as believed on him, gave him the power to become. So that means there is a process. And we can tell, the process cannot be just coming to the altar and speaking. It's not the words that, something must happen. When you look at John 1, 14, 2 again, it says, and the word became flesh. And it's the two, those two words. Word is used for the word became flesh. 
and become the sons of God, the word genomai. Which means it is the same process by which the eternal logos, Jesus who always existed before the beginning of time. Let me explain. Before Jesus became Jesus, Jesus is just the physical man manifestation of the logos of God. The Bible said in the beginning was the word and the word was, was with God. He always existed and he will come as a theophany, a pair. You know, and they'll say the angel of Yahweh appeared to when I said the angel of Yahweh, I remembered something. <laughs> well, go there. You know, appeared to somebody. So Jesus existed before. But when it became time for him to come into our space, because you cannot function in any space without coming from that space. Therefore, I cannot enter into water for extended periods of time unless I, unless I modify myself for the environment by using a submarine. The Ghanaians get it, you see now. So there is no way an Elohim would just come to earth without having a human suit. So there was a process by which the Logos, the eternal word, became human. And what was the process? I will take us through the process very quickly because I want us to see the process by which you two will become the son of God. I told you it is the same genome. It is, can we call it a reverse operation? Or the same operation by which he became a son of God, a man. When God became man, is the same operation by which man becomes God. So he went to a virgin. It means someone who did not have the capability to produce that thing. So when you look at your life and you don't have the capability to produce what God is asking you to do, you are a good candidate. In fact, you are the one heaven has been looking for. One that it is clear that it must be God. Nothing. Nothing she had. And he says, Hail Mary, you are highly favored of God. And you know the story already where Luke 1, 28. Behold, you shall conceive in thy womb. Always, there are no extra words in the word of God. Why are you saying you shall conceive in your womb? Can I conceive in my head? Mm -mm -mm. It means I probably can conceive in other places. Yeah. By the time you see Job 38 verse 8, the Bible says, Who shut the doors of the sea when the sea came out of his womb? Whole oceans come out of matrices. Some, some strategy can produce whole oceans. That means there are universes inside you waiting to be birthed. And this is the process. This is the process. Because when we talk about sons of God, we talk about humans manifesting as God. In business, in medicine, in education, in hospitality. Are you getting it? Back to our Luke. You shall conceive. That word conceive actually talks of you shall arrest. You shall seize. Something will be magneted to your womb. That means you sit in a, a crowd like this. Some are conceiving, some are not. And sometimes you need to listen to it ten times before you can conceive. But make sure you conceive. Because there shall be no word of God that is void of power. Said you shall bring forth what a son. Son means hypos, the carrier of DNA. You shall conceive in your venture capital business. And shall bring forth a solution, a strategy that carries the DNA of God. And you shall call his name Yeshua, Joshua, God is salvation. Why? Because the solution will save many. It could be equitable housing. It will save many. It could be a solution in the educational space. It will save many. And in case you don't know how these failures in government and everything hurt us in Africa, there are more people who die on the operating table because power is not stable than anybody can raise from the dead. The institutions are stronger and more dangerous than you think. See, the enemy is very happy for us to sing all day long on Sunday. Because when it gets to Monday, it just overturns everything we have said. There's no power there to do unless we take those power back, those, 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 those abilities back to the mountains, those anointings back to the mountains and do and undo. 
He said it shall be great. Because anything born of God will be great. Amen. You don't get it. Amen. That career of yours shall be great. Amen. That marriage of yours shall be great. Amen. That son you shall give birth to shall be great. Amen. That solution of yours shall be great. Amen. And he shall be called the son of the highest. Why? Because there shall be several high ones. So you see, you have to understand when he says the highest. That means something is coming against you. It's just that yours will be the highest. So why do you shake when you see opposition? There is nothing to dominate if there is no resistance. And the Lord God shall give unto him what? The throne of his father David. Every solution that is born of God. Every anointing that is born of God. Every person that issues from the throne is destined to sit on the throne of his mountain. You shall conceive in your wombs and bear a child. You shall call his name Yeshua. He shall be great. I have to, as I'm bedding this, landing this plane, let me explain to you why he has to be great. It's like saying you shall conceive in your womb. Mr. Dino, please stand up. Don't be angry. Stand up. Stand up. Let the people see you. You are safe. They know you are married to me. The only husband on this side. And it's like saying you shall conceive in your womb and bear a son for Mr. A. And it shall be tall. Will it be short before? How will it be? If he carries the DNA of Mr. A, he has to be what? Tall. I remember when we had TJ. TJ was so light that his older brother came and said, you may sit, sir. Thank you so much. They've seen you. Thank you. His older brother came and said, why is... Ah, studied him, studied him for about three days. Mommy, why is he so light? And the rest of us are dark. I said, ah! It's just now it's dark, he has rhymed with us. <laughs> it shall be great. When the sons of God came unto the children of uh, the daughters of women, men in Genesis 6 4, they said, What was born of them were the great men of renown. Actually, it's not great men, it's Gibor. That what was born of them was great. Why? Because they were Elohim. So when Elohim came upon women, what was born were men of renown. They were in rebellion and they were great. How much more you that you are in submission? DNA does not lie. If you are from God, you will manifest like God. So when the Holy Spirit came upon, you know, I studied this thing for a while. I said, I don't get it. For me to be able to bear something that God put in me, we must have what is called hybrid compatibility. That's why lizards and snakes cannot mate, but they're reptiles. So Apostle Dabs, for Mary to be able to bear a child that is of God, there is a, thank you, biologist, there is a seed in us that is divine. That is why Elohim could come down too and sleep with women and bear something. Mm, you don't get it. You're a doctor. If there is no same DNA, we cannot breed. So Elohim bred physically. But when he came to God, I now understood, oh prophetic dancer, what was going on. That is why when God created man in a man's earth suit, he breathed into him the breath of life. I said, that is it. The carrier of the DNA is the Holy Spirit. So when he took a suit from this earth, created a clay figure, and wanted to turn, give it an element of God, he breathed his spirit. When it was time for a virgin to conceive, he made sure there was no male DNA. He became the contributor. There is more of a mystery because what we are telling you is that Jesus, the Son of God, has no male human DNA, but he has female DNA. You will survive it as a man. You survive it. What I just told you, you survive it. Let it sink. So that when God wanted to return to the earth and fix the mess that had been created by Adam, he 
took men out of the way and said, woman, come, let's talk. Let's fix this thing. Clap if you're a woman in the wall. Thank you. He said he shall be great. I'm letting you know, even if you are 90 and you are not yet great, if you are in this hall, before you are gathered unto your fathers, you must be great. And then Mary said in verse 34, how can these things be? She wasn't saying it cannot be. She said, can you describe to me the technology? And he said in verse 35, the Holy Ghost, do you see, shall overshadow you. Episcopal will overshadow you. The power of the highest. You have high, but this is the highest. It shall overshadow thee. Then the holy thing, the holy solution will be called the one that carries the DNA of God. I'm saying that because we're rising now, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to say, Father, this marriage is a mess, but this is the doctor's report, but <laughs> I was talking about the fact that we're meant to master the earth. The earth is in chaos, but Father, look at Abuja, you have someone. And before God could do it, he needed something from Mary. Mary said, be it unto me according to your word. He needed submission. And therein lies the problem in the body of Christ till today. That submission to his will. That we are going to do it the way he wants. Let us rise. Jesus said in John 5, 19, I can of myself do nothing. Except what I see the father do. What really makes a son a son is submission to the will of the Father. Therefore, do you now understand the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, not our governor. Our Father, not our king. Our Father, not our president. Hallowed, which I in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You have sons here. Let your kingdom come. Sons do the will of the Father. Jesus said, this works that I do. It's not me who does it. It's the Father that does the works. <laughs> I want you to do something very quickly. You want to rededicate this, your life to Christ. You want to submit the life to God back. But you're not even sure that you're born again. You see, we've overspoken about born again till it's become some people have been born again five times, six times, seven times. But that submission, that rededication, that really saying, not my will, but yours be done. That is what we have not done. Can we just bow? Why are we bowing our heads? It's a good thing you want to do. Can you raise up your hands if you say, you know what? I submit. I'm coming back. I'm going to put a decision slip in your hands and you're going to feel it because I don't want you to go out. Then we come and pray or something like that, you know? So, hands up. Ushers, you said you have decision slips. Thank you. We're going to start praying now. We have 30, 32 minutes to pray. In this prayer time, there are no tricks. There are no gimmicks. Pastor Mary said, I said, shout Jesus. It's because Jesus is the name above all names. That's what the Holy Ghost told me to say. So death gave way. Another lady in London said, I don't understand it. She did not come near me. A doctor and I went down and I got up healed. On the prayer call yesterday, people were healed. The day before, four people were healed. I was in the Watergate church. Two women are pregnant. I didn't touch anybody. There was no time. But God touched them. Now let me be honest with you. If a woman with braids has the kind of results I have, nothing wrong with braids though. If a woman, a mere woman like me, has the results that I have, he must tell you that if she's not carrying something, something is carrying her. For there to be this kind of results, there are two angels that work with me. The angel of breakthrough and the angel of his presence. 
That's the only way a woman who has no fallopian tubes can conceive. Do you have the decision slips ready? We want to pray. We are praying in 30 minutes and we're going. They're ready. Put up your hands. You are giving your life to Christ, please. I'm the one you have shown mercy. You have shown mercy. You have shown mercy. This is how you avail yourself of that mercy. I can't give you mercy until you submit yourself to me. Are your hands up? You have shown me mercy. decision slip in your hand. Come up quickly. I want to pray with you. Come up quickly. You have your decision slip. We want to pray. I have 30 minutes to pray. I have 30 minutes in which you are going to become great, become huge, in which your destiny is going to change forever. Come on, Mary. I don't get the beats. We're not crying. It is a beautiful, joyous moment. I free you. You can take any song. Okay, they're still coming. You are giving this life to Christ. It's a submission. Are we ready? Are we sure that we're ready? Is there a dedication? Asha, you want to help me? You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. And you have shown me to me father say after me I can you father in the name of Jesus I'm back home yes I am back home I am back home I submit my life to you I submit my life to you ah that was low is that the problem I submit my life to you Take over. Take over. Take over. Take over. Let the power of God overshadow me. Let me become. Let me become a child of God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, 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 my help has come. Oh, 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 oh. my.
minutes and 48 seconds, and that's too much for God to do what he wants to do. So you are going to say now, <laughs> Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. I see you get the juice. You know that this is now time for business. Are you praying? You know where, which part of your life you need the Holy Spirit. For some people it's business. For some other person they've handed you an infertility report that is horrible. Thank you. 
Shout Jesus now. We're going to shout Jesus now. Anything contrary to the dominion of that name that resides in your family life, in your life, in your business, in your lineage, in your body, must let go. I'll be honest with you. There are more divine beings here than there are human beings. God said we are walking into a Mahanaim. There is a spiritual camp. And there is a physical camp. And I had warned you. Leave your neighbor alone. In the presence of their father. Let them be. I'm going to count to three. And you are going to shout Jesus. I'm not touching anybody. Please, you can see. One, two, three. In the name of Jesus, we are going for count two. Let me be very honest. I think part of why the Holy Spirit tells us to shout Jesus is because you cannot remain too dignified and do it. <laughs> it's to ruffle your composure a bit. I think, I don't know. We're going for a count of two. Foreigners shall hear my voice and come trembling out of their close places. A people I have not known will obey me. When they hear of me, they will submit themselves to me. I come against you, yes. ancient mountains. I come against you, ancestral curses. I come against you. Let my shatter for God in this meeting is ready for you.
say, I am ending. I see ancestral. I'm talking about something that goes down to your very roots. You are going to bring seven people to me. Ushers, watch you. Project Jeremiah 2011. For the Lord God is with me. Like a mighty terrible one. I cut you off. From the arms of your fathers. From the arms of your mothers. In the name of Jesus. If the DNA Jesus. of God is in you. Let every contrary DNA. That has been raising his head against your greatness. Give way for your sake this afternoon. You are going to pray this prayer. And then I'm going to say a simple word. And you will find them. You are going to pray this prayer. But the Lord is with me as a mighty terrible one. You are going to say, Father, let my persecutors stumble. Let them not prevail. Let them be greatly ashamed. Because they will not prosper. Let the everlasting confusion never be forgotten. Come and pray. Amy, for there shall be no rima that proceeded out. It is the origin that matters. That shall not carry the DNA to come to pass. Are you getting it? So when you see Mark chapter 9 verse 1 to 7, get home and read it. The Bible says the same word. And a cloud came and episkiazo Jesus Christ. And he was transformed. For the transformation to happen there was Moses, there was Elijah. Moses is the word, is the law, you've had the word. Mm. Elijah is prayer. So we receive the word as the seed and the DNA. Then we incubate over it like a hen flutters over hey. its chicken in prayer. And then something happens. When we are growing up, some people say we are prayer and spirit people. Some people say we are word diets. You must be both. Seven people you are bringing to me now because that ancestral, you, you fought and fought. Some have fasted and fasted. Let me say Matuto's story, Abby, because she'll say it. She said, They have so many testimonies. This is one of my favorite testimonies. This beautiful young girl had not graduated. She had, she had repeated year, the final year three times. When she sent me her results, I was saying 6, 4, 16. How do you get 4%, 6%? It's not even possible. And she brought, she's the one who brought her parents to me. She, you can save your family as a young person. You are not too young. That's why you won't be in a rush as a young person. You settle in the presence of God. I was 11 when I gave my life to Christ. The entire family have given their life to Christ. My father died a Christian, a professor. Listen to me. They came. Debola was there. Wendy was there in Joburg. It didn't take three minutes. Yeah. Apparently, no grandchild of the family had graduated. Did you hear that? 26 years old, 25 years old. God changed everything that day. She wrote an exam on Monday. The first result was 77.5. The next one, 70.84. She's graduated with a distinction. Yeah. But listen, Siswe, listen. Two of her cousins graduated with her. Then I said, God was the meaning. Because you people give some people testimony half by half. First, as soon as her grandmother said, saw her, she said, you are graduating this year. She said to her mom, ah, 
Mrs. A has lost it. She saw it. But Pastor Golade, when the prison door is open and many of us are inside, and Matuto runs out, if you have common sense, what will you do? So the ones we prayed for, the ones we didn't pray for, have graduated. And you are watching, and you see some people free in front, and you're like, well, I know. Maybe the Lord is not here for me. He only does it as a show to you to show that he's here. He doesn't have to. Seven people are stepping out of ancestral. The Lord told me to tell you his way. Listen to me. He must have mercy on you is what you must have. And you know why. Sons of God usually have a code that is given to them. If you ask Apostle Dabs, there are things that everybody else can do and it's lawful, but okay. he's not allowed. I mean, Madam Dabs. We are going to shout. Jesus just wants every ancestral yoke. We dance, Jesus. You are my confidence. You are my Lord. that thing, you are tired of it. Come on. Place your hand on your head, tell it to go. Because we are going to shout Jesus now, it's going. With your hand on your head, it's going. I like what Bishop said. It means it is God's own armor we're using, not ours. You are not fighting with your own hand. Come on. We are going to raise a loud shout for me now. One. Two. Ushers, watch out. Three! Jesus! Every altar! Jesus! I see someone running! Jesus! I see a man. No, if you can work out yourself, Jesus. you shouldn't be here. Jesus! to me. John 12 31. Sit and hear me. Now is the priest of this world judged. Today if you are dwelling in anybody's body, you are illegal. You committed treasonable felony. They cannot harbor you. You are in rebellion. You cannot live in them. You are a disembodied spirit. You cannot live on earth. You are illegal. And I'm going to evict you. In the name that is above every name, that are the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Christ to the glory of God the Father. We are going to shout, one, two, three, Jesus, Jesus. Last, last, last prayer point. Feel me. It's Exodus chapter three. You know where I need the feeling. You know it. We want an anointing of fire. Who wants fire? Fire came on one woman's business, the restaurant business. The lady who has been stealing her money came and resigned herself. That's what I'm saying. When you say the lady fell under the anointing, she came herself and resigned and confessed and left. She made double. I have her tax figures. I posted it on the platform. Double this year what she made last year. Speak to the lady. Raise up your hands. Exodus 3, verse 1 to 2. Let the fire fall. Let the fire fall. You know where you need God, please. You know where you need God. You know where you need God. Behold, the smell of my son has become like the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. Your smell is changing. Mama Shatali Brata. Somebody's feet 
I hop it like this. That's it, that's it, that's what's happened. Your smell is changing, the atmosphere around you is changing. They will pass over many people to look for you, to call you. What do you think happened to little patients? 25 years old, a house in Jabi. Something causes it. Behold, the smell of my son. It's like the smell of a few with all that flesh. Let that fire fall. Pour away every stench. Let them go to their wealth. Let them go to their greatness. to talk to God. You need him to heal your heart. You've been through so much. You've heard how he loves you. Pour your heart out before you. chosen by your mercy to listen to mortals. When I shout, hallelujah, Holy Spirit, let the fire fall. When we shout, hallelujah, let the fire fall. Give us a release unto speed. An anointing is coming on you. In London, Jude, one J.P. Morgan type. You know, we have all those Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan types. I don't know what it is. They need to give me shares in these places. He was like, my hands are burning. What do I do? So he went to meet Shea in his British accent. What do I do? My hands are burning. I'm like, I don't know. I didn't burn your hands. I don't know what to do. So your hands will burn. Your feet will burn. It might be like fires on your head, but you are very okay. Dependable God. Dependable God. Dependable, dependable. You still took my song. Dependable God. Dependable, dependable God. Dependable God. Dependable, dependable God. We're going to shout hallelujah. One, two, three. 
Are you really praising God? Yeah. If God is still dealing with you, it's okay. You can stay here. Nobody's looking at you. Amen.